Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest <laughs> Atari 2600 and 7800 games. And tonight we have a very special show. I'm going to take this earpiece out because this <laughs> distracts me for the moment. Uh, we have the developer spotlight with John Champo of Champ Games. So I know why you're all tuning in, why the chat is scrolling like crazy, because we have a very special guest tonight. Mm -hmm. So many games we're going to go over tonight, really quickly, so <laughs> except for the last one, which is Gorf Arcade, yes. which has its world debut tonight mm -hmm. on this show, which is extremely exciting. Mm -hmm. um, we're also going to be revealing three never before seen proof of concept work in progress <laughs> games from Champ Games as well. Uh, Kicks, Toontacom, and Moon Cresta. Um, so I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in and also of all of our subscribers as well. Alan the Fur, Armscar Coder, Caffman 2D, Captain Classic, Catalogs, Charles and Chat, Coconut E1, Dianoid, Dan AVC, Glenn Main, Great Defender, Gretams, Johnny Nitro, Johnny WC23, Juan Urado, Carl G, Mark Space Inc, MCP90, Mick Muse, Mighty Squirrel, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Muddy Funster, Nathan Strum, Pack Rat VG, Quahog2600, RC70, Repentless VG, Scum Software, Six Sweet, Smitty B7800, Socrates 0603, mm -hmm. Spartan501, S Ramirez 2008, D Train 37, The Washman 89, Thrust 26, Thunkers, Tiki Dan K, Trek MD, and you can get your name on this list to the left slash right of Tanya there. Um, <laughs> for free, if you link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch Prime, mm -hmm. and you can support us. Like somebody just, somebody just followed. Thank you for following Zmart. Glad you're enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And also make sure you follow and like us on all the things because you get alerted to special shows like, like this, this one. that you may miss if yes. you're not. Ah, uh, now I'm going to put my earpiece in again because we don't have any news tonight. Because why would we have news when we have John Champo? I'd like <laughs> to introduce you to the developer of Atari 2600 homebrew instant classics such as Mappy, Zookeeper, Wizard of War, and Galagon. For his developer spotlight on Zero Page Homebrew, please welcome John Champo. Let's see if I can get him on screen. <laughs> Yay! Uh, no, nope. he's completely frozen. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, it's actually pretty warm over here. It's a picture of him. It's kind of cool. You might be able to hear him. Mm -hmm. uh, can you hear me now? We can hear you. We can hear you. <laughs> can anyone else? Is uh, the question. Is it coming through? His audio is coming through. Oh, well, that's something. And a frozen picture of him. <laughs> yeah, can we get a better frozen picture of me, though? <laughs> <laughs> Let's try and get a better frozen picture. <laughs> the problem is this is very sensitive sensitive the, and the cat cats... was just lying on it so we're gonna blame pixel the cats are running around <laughs> i have a couple cats uh... over here too so <laughs> <laughs> they do like to fluff things up a little bit too you know okay try it again yeah disconnected reconnected of course it was all working a second ago yep there we go oh nope oh is that, a second. Is, is that a better uh, frozen picture? <laughs> Worst screenshot. Wait, I'm not gonna. I'm actually gonna try to look good for one second. Now you sound like you're from space. <laughs> I am like uh, Gorf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Can you yeah. get the cat yeah. out of here? Because he it's is so not helping. <laughs> I don't know if he's hindering, but he's oh, not helping. Oh, he's hindering. Okay. This might be a cat-free show. Uh, yeah. okay. Let's try that. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. Cats are scrambling upstairs. <laughs> now we've got a green stripes. Okay, we're Better, going through the worse. gamut of colors and yep. uh, backgrounds. Now, I'm going to tuck that chin. Whoop. Gently underneath. <laughs> Don't step on it. Careful. Don't touch it. Yeah. Okay. So, please welcome <laughs> John <laughs> Champeau. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully everything's in sync. Please let me know if it is not in sync. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
Welcome to the show, John. Thanks, James. Hi, Tanya. Hello. So I think the uh, last hi, hi, time we too. saw you was uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2019. Mm -hmm. Sadly, yes. this year there was no Portland Retro Gaming Expo or any other expos yeah. for that matter. Mm -hmm. So we have to make do with things like this. <laughs> um, make sure audio and video, but is it in sync? Please let me know. Somebody say yes, in sync, like the band. Um, so we're going to take a look at it is in sync good so we're going to take a look at a ton of your games we're going to go rapid Please. fire through them because i played a lot of these on the show and yeah. some of them that you've been on the show for mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so um we're going to start off with your early days oh, going great. way back <laughs> <laughs> this is your no life. your early days are just as impressive yeah. <laughs> uh so we're good. You started off making games um, for your Atari 800 and also DOS. Um, you made two, as far as I can tell, games, two major games anyway, that for your Atari 800, um, it was called Kar Karate Game. Yeah, it's karate, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, Sorcerer, which is a, a Wizard of War knockoff. So a, a very early Wizard of War uh, that you wanted to make. Yep, yep, that was from uh, 1980. So I was 12 when I when I did those. So it's like 40 years ago. Wow. So uh, <laughs> don't count. I, never count the years. Exactly. You can say the year, you can say the year, but never add it up. Yeah. <laughs> I do have those discs somewhere, like we said. I converted them over to uh, the Atari using the SIO PC interface two years ago, and, and at that time I proclaimed, "Now they're on my hard drive. They're safe forever." Now I can't find them. So, <laughs> oh, of course, yes, yeah, definitely um, digitize them over and put them on modern media. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure, just in case. Yep. So, um, and you said you made them with ASCII art. Yes. Yeah. Back then, I didn't really know much about programming, but I learned. Um, I knew. I learned. Taught myself basic, and then to uh, to make the games, I didn't know anything about um, how to do graphics, but I knew how to alter the ASCII set. So. Yes. You know, whatever. Oh, text so I would you actually use, I would... altered the ASCII set and not yeah. just used ASCII. Yeah, no. So, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> We're all having, uh, uh -huh, we're all right. adjusting to these earbuds here. I have small ears. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, actually, yeah. So, I changed the uh, actual graphics. So, it's, I mean, it's very clunky movement, as you can imagine. I think it's like 40 by 25 is the screen resolution, but um, it worked. Though, oh, so. yeah. Yeah, so oh, it was cool. Good. Yeah, if if I can if I can dig them up, I'll definitely send a couple of screenshots over, and you should be able to actually run them on an emulator at some point. So, just basic. Yeah. Game, so. Oh, that would be awesome. Yep. Can you tilt your um, camera a bit down? You got a lot of headspace there. A little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're gonna move into. Um, actually, there's a really detailed Champ Games fan page on the internet. Very. Which is. Uh, made by uh, Manfred Kremer. And this is all, yes. he, he mostly focuses on his on your early stuff, um, all your DOS games. So we're gonna take a quick look at that actually, because um, it's it's quite uh, quite interesting. Let's see if I can uh, line this up nicely. Uh, yeah, so the uh, story behind those games are um, back in the early 90s after I finished college, um, I had taken C and assembly in college. Um, and of course, yeah. I've always wanted to make video games. I'd been doing it before. So, but with this new power, I decided that, you know, I wanted to try to exactly convert some of these other ones. So I went on America Online. I don't know right. if anyone remembers that. Looking oh, yeah. for. Uh, I remember games. the stacks and stacks of CDs that were delivered. Yeah, one, exactly. one time my friends and I took a stack of the CDs and threw them in a microwave. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can do that tonight. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, so I, I wanted to play Pac Man like everyone else, you know, after, you know, by 95, 93, 94, you know, you start getting the, the itch of wanting to play those games that you played when you were a kid. So I tried to look for a Pac Man yeah. games and. Centipede and Asteroid and stuff like that. And uh, um, they were all fairly decent. I went, well, I can probably, maybe I can do better. So that's kind of what inspired me to uh, to do these myself. So and eventually I turned into- Yeah, they're all the, 
they're all the classic uh, arcade games, right? All, yeah. all the all the standbys, the good standbys here. Asteroids and Space Invaders, Galaga, Galaxian, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. So what, a couple of them have M at the end, E-M. I was wanting to ask you about that. I'm not Pack even em. sure where that came Miss Pack from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was just, I mean, trying to make it sound like Pac-Man without actually being Pac-Man. Um, mm. oh, okay. once, once we had the dash EM, we went, well, let's throw it on everything. Centipede M, <laughs> M, you know, we had a, a hey, yeah. type of that. And you know, it, was, uh, it was just a bad idea that got worse with every release. But uh, so. <laughs> Almost forcing it in at times, yeah. Yeah. Now, I found... Uh, Th thank goodness for archive.org. Um, um, I found you... some of your early, early, uh, you're like, uh oh. Um, I'm in trouble. Some of your early websites and uh, some of your early logos here. So oh, Champ, yes. The, this is like your earliest one that I could find. Yep, Champ, that is. Champ Programming. Yesterday's Arcade on Today's PC. See, that almost still works as a, as a tagline for you. Yes, it's yesterday's. It does. Arcade on on yesterday's console. Atari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a uh, yeah. I still had the uh, blue, red, white um, motif going there, but uh, I think at the at the time I was Champ Programming was supposed to be you know I wanted to be a software developer too, which I am anyway. And Champ Games yeah. is just gonna be a, a division of Champ Programming. Um, <laughs> so, one of many subdivisions yeah. Yes. yeah actually i did do a lot of contracting work under the champ programming name as well so champ games was just oh awesome you know, it was my fun uh way to uh enjoy my hobby so and then you went to this uh this one and uh this kind of pac-man-esque with some some blue balls in 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 the middle to kind of spell out the letters uh and then it switched to champ games yeah uh, around the mid 90s i guess yeah everything got a little weird in the 90s for all of us i think and uh my logo <laughs> did not survive either so um i think it's kind of cool actually but uh um yeah yeah kind of a modern look um i kind of switched to the champ games logo that we have now um because that's the best i could draw on uh the atari <laughs> at the time like in 2001 when i made it when i was working on champ hockey i went okay i want to do my logo and i went well champ games is the only thing that can fit in this thing but I kept the red and blue, so that's right. kind of where it all uh, it all came from. So. Yeah, and I mean it. It looks great on your shirt right now, mm -hmm. on your uh, oh, your hoodie you. there. Yep, and you know, and, uh, if it gets too hot, I can take this off and put on my t-shirt too. <laughs> <laughs> just and then I can just show you my multiple tattoo layers. Going, you know. <laughs> Champ Games tattoo right there. Exactly. Champ Is that the just right one? across the chest. Yeah, right across yeah. the chest. Yeah. <laughs> Never would be without advertising. Promote, promote, promote. It's like inception of Champ Games logos. That's you know? right. So you did a ton, a ton of games, including um, Last Defense in 91, Champ Centipede 92, Champ pa Pac Maniac 93. Like you switched from EGA then to VGA. And then uh, onward, it's VGA Centipede, Asteroids, Miss Pac-Man, Galaxian, Kong, then Miss Pac-M, updated with a new name, and then Pac-M, updated with a new name, Galaxia, Centipede-M, uh, Asterox, Invaders, Galagon. Wow. Um, so we're going to take a look at one of those right now. You said it was your, your most well-known ones, your most uh, popular one, uh, Champ Kong. Uh, yes, yep, everyone loved that one. So we're going to actually play it on DOSBox here. Um, yeah, it should, it should be noted that um, this was before MAME. So I based it, I originally based it off of the Atari 800 version. That's the only version I had. And I hadn't seen Donkey Kong or played it probably in maybe 10 years when I started it. Um, oh, okay. Then, so if that, that explains why probably the first level looks the way it does because... Uh, it was kind of based off that, so. Uh, just one second here. There we go. Now we have the chat on the screen, on the second screen. Okay, so looks this uh, screen would look familiar to uh, a lot of people who yeah, have been uh, using computers since back in the day. <laughs> so we just changed directory to Kong. 
And then it's called Sea Kong. Oh, you get to see yesterday's the, uh... arcade on today's PC. Nice. <laughs> Sweet. So, here you go. It's keyboard. Okay. Um, up, down, left, right, enter. Uh, control is fire. So there you go. Oh, you don't have a. Uh, so you don't have um, Kong. Yeah. Great artwork. The um, Champ Games. One of the things that we sold was it was called the, the Champ Cable. Um, it was basically allowed you to hook um, Atari um, Atari joysticks to the printer port. Oh it, yeah, it, I did see that on the list yeah, of things that so, you're selling, and I was going to ask you about that. Yep, that's exactly what it was. Actually, my, my brother Paul is the one who designed it and put it together. So I saw him a box of like probably 20 of them left. If anyone's interested, just send 1995 to uh, Champ Programming, Cromwell, Connecticut. <laughs> probably won't get to me. <laughs> uh, it'll be a pretty delayed shipping as well. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> delayed everything. So. <laughs> um, so. Who did uh, who did what on on this on this game uh, back in the day? You, you you did the programming, but did you also do the artwork? Um, I did some of the artwork. I had a, I had a graphic artist. Uh, he had reached out to me um, after I had done my original games like uh, Centipede and Asteroids, and um, I had started I worked on started working on this, and he uh, he did some of the graphics here. So um, okay, so he, yeah, so it uh, came out. I think he did a pretty good job. I think by that time, by the time we were ready to release this, because I think I started this in 94 or late 94. It wasn't released till February yeah. 96. So by that time, I think MAME was starting to come into uh, into play. Um, so by right. that time, we had access to, you know, at least screenshots and be able to, to work off those for these. So um, I did all the sounds right. of this, though, with the... Uh, that's actually me oh, okay. playing on the keyboard on a real on a Casio keyboard, and recording it oh. through um, recording it through Cakewalk, um, and then those are yep. MIDI files. I use Cakewalk as playing. well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's me playing <laughs> live when you hear like those those tunes. Um, oh wow! You know, we have really Cakewalk, good. Uh, I, I, I did clean up a little bit, but uh, so that's uh, that was my early days. So if it sounds a little off, that's why because uh, um, I did stuff. <laughs> so I did uh, the sound effects and. I think we actually did get those from from Mame or from some kind of site where we were able to take the wave files and convert them. So. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations, so. Player One. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you get you beat uh, some of his scores. <laughs> yeah. So well, one of the cool things about um, the, the games back then is um, that the champ mode that I put into everything. So. I always we always had like the standard arcade mode which is what you're playing now which we try to capture oh, the spirit of the arcade see. as much oh, as possible sorry. um but then they all had um they all had like a champ mode um if you go to uh um, okay yeah, so if you go to the main game. menu and go into options yeah I'll if you like exit the game first yeah then go to options go to the main menu and you'll see like game settings Oh, game settings. Okay. Right. Um, no, up. Oh, game mode. Shareware. Oh, is this is not the full version. Oh, the skill under the skill, you mean? Oh, no, no. Wow. Okay. I, I thought I thought you had the full version here. Um, all the I really saw no, the full version into the public domain. <laughs> you can get them all from uh, Manfred's site. Just so you know. Yeah. No, I think you passed only a couple over. But uh, so you would have a different uh, skill level option. Yeah, but also the uh, the game mode. If you've been in the chat mode, it has uh, four new levels, completely different levels. Oh my god! Okay, yeah, yeah that's it's really exciting. cool. So um, it has like an elevator, and yeah, it's, it's it has a couple bonus levels in it. So it's uh, it's it's pretty fun. So okay, it's so we're gonna chat. take a look at some unreleased games, mm -hmm. unreleased DOS games. If you can exit out. Um, First one's going to be Frogum, which I'm pretty sure everybody can guess what that might be. <laughs> You've added the EM again to it. Yeah, that, that was a pour of, of Gorf, actually. We just spelt the name <laughs> different. So it's actually... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Uh, so, Frogum. is cool. Frogum. Sorry? Oh, did, you, did you see the ASCII R at the end there? Um Oh, no, I missed it. Damn it. it was fine. <laughs> it, was, it was silly, so. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I had fun doing ASCII art. I had a BBS um, back in the day, so I would do like animated ASCII art for, for yep. DOS and uh, do all my screens and all the menus. And it was a ton of fun, and I wish I had them. That's so, cool. This is not a full game, if I'm correct. It yeah, this kind is of plays. Like, yeah, there's like 30% done. This is really just a proof of concept. But it was obviously it was coming along pretty well. I had actually uh, started uh, updating my game driver at the at the time, so I was showing off to myself how I could have like the text in the back. These are all like just sprites that you can move and and animate and stuff right. like that. So this is really all, all you can do. So probably spent probably uh, maybe like two weeks on this one um, before I stopped. So but it obviously yeah. shows that it's That's... coming along pretty well. This is going to be a good one. And the the champ level oh, is yeah, actually going to be amazing. cool. It's going to have like. Um, potholes in the middle of the uh, the road that if you jumped in them oh you'd go underneath a, wow. another level where it'd be like a sewer that would lead oh, to oh wow uh, kind of like yeah. frogger 2 where there's different different types of levels yeah exactly so so we had uh um that was always a fun part obviously porting these was, was fun but then sitting down and designing what the champ mode was going to be like and you know ah uh, uh, so yes because then you could put your own creativity into it, right? Yeah, exactly. Make it your own, almost. New graphics and stuff like that. So, I mean. So, yeah, so that's, that's how far it was going to be. I think this is the first time it's been ever shown in public. So, it's uh, yeah. this is from 90, and, and, 98. So, that's, well, 32 years ago. So, <laughs> 97. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it looks like when you do a proof of concept, go to Burger Climb. <laughs> Come on, you know DOS. No, I don't. <laughs> what? You never use DOS? Not very much, no. Okay. Uh, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> no. There you go. Thank you. It's essential knowledge. Um, when you do a, a proof of concept, you kind of throw everything at the screen, right? Everything that's going to be in the game, because then you could scale it back. As I saw, you had the, the game over underneath. And yep. all the cars and trucks, all the logs. Exactly. Yeah, I try, I try to get all the mechanics done, and then I focus on, you know, um, the gameplay and putting in all the bell and whistles at the end. So, and sounds, of course. Yeah, because I, so uh, yeah, I guess you, you want to prove to yourself that the, the biggest version, the, the most things on the screen are going to work first. Yeah. And then once you're fine with that knowledge, then you can easily scale back and you're like, oh, yeah, it'll be fine. Exactly. So yeah, so th this one is gonna come was come along pretty well. I kind of like the name too. It's kind of cool. So uh, um, yeah, very recognizable. Uh, burger climb rhymes with burger time. It's always a good to uh, do that kind yep. of thing when you want to skirt around the name. Yep, exactly. That one actually fits pretty well. It's not like one that just sounds painful. You know, like uh, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to say anything. Uh, I was going to say Robot War, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somebody might have used a, a name. I was thinking of some as as well, and going, I uh, know, I better not say anything. Say that out loud. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's why I, I just made fun of my own. So Robot War. So but it's, it's, that's right. That would work pretty well. So. But anyway, yeah. So that, yeah, so this is something that yeah. obviously was going to come in the the next batch of games that we had planned. This this was number nine and ten, and then we had another ten that were planned out. Um, Moon Patrol, Tutankhamen, um, Kong yep. Jr. was a big one we we're going to do. Wow. Um, yeah. Super Pac-Man, um, yeah. a few others. Loon, um, Moon Patrol. I had, I had working, um, I, I don't know where all the code went. It's on like some some backup oh, zip, no. zip disk or something. I have like proof of concepts of like all those games somewhere. I can't find them though, unfortunately. So. Oh, wow. That's um, a shame. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I've lost drives over the years. They've crashed or... Yep. I try to keep everything, but I had a crash in 97. Yes. <laughs> 97? Yeah, that was my one hard drive crash, and I lost a lot of stuff. But most of the stuff I've made since is past that. So so, so it looks like kind of you, uh, this kind of wound down around 1997. Same time I had my crash. Uh, totally coincidental, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, Actually, it was uh, August so 3rd, what... 1998, Black Friday, we called mm -hmm. it. <laughs> oh boy so what what happened was the the appetite for dos games were just not there anymore or you got involved in something else or oh no i was actually uh, approached it? by atari and um namco to take down this game so 
That's a good reason. Yeah, That's a so very that basically good took. And, and surprisingly, <laughs> the only game that we would have had left was Kong and Invaders. So oh, like, okay. Interesting. Hmm. Huh. So, yeah, so that would take out a majority of what you had up there and it's like oh, okay well that yeah. that's your over i guess yeah well at that point what i was considering doing was just re-releasing the game since i had a chat mode for each one of them just take the classic mode out um you know work uh, a few graphics because you know it's like uh um i had a lawyer and all that kind of stuff but it was an you know it just at that point it was it was just a part-time thing so i wasn't going to spend thousands of dollars yeah. for something that was yeah, i had a full-time job yeah. this was it's just something that was supposed to be fun that just kind of spiraled out of control so but um exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't once you stop having fun then yeah it's done yeah exactly yeah, yeah. When, when you're working out till four in the morning on these going to sleep and getting up at seven to go work on another full-time software <laughs> job and then come back and do this all over again you know because it, it was just uh it was, yeah. it was too much so yeah so we're going to switch over to the next era of games that started looks like around the early 2000s which is your 2600 games so yes. as we as we load it up and get it ready um in a 2003 interview you said that in the winter of 2000 very specific you're introduced to your first love of video games reintroduced um the atari 2600 so uh how did this take place did you buy an old console again or discover emulation online like how did how did the winter of two thousand happen? The winter of two thousand, yes. Let's let's turn back the clock. Um, <laughs> in winter two thousand, my daughter Elizabeth was born, and I was on ah. daddy duty from you know nine o'clock in the at night till three in the morning, and I was slowly going insane. And a friend of mine brought. I like to talk, oh. and we talked about classic Very games. Good. He goes, "Hey, I have an old Atari. You want to take it home? Maybe uh, play a few games." And that's how it all happened. So I brought it home, hooked it up, you know, then started getting into uh, playing all the games I played when I was a kid. I went, hey, this is actually still pretty fun. So um, that's kind of where it all started. So helping me. Obviously, once I did that, I immediately started. I found like the Stella list. I think that's what it was yeah. called. Um, the day yeah, the Stella mailing the list. Yeah, exactly. I got involved in that. I started to learn how to program. I was following Dennis. Oh, he's actually on this call. The guy, Dennis Debro, you know, he wrote um, yep. Pac-Man. Uh, one second. Right. Uh, sound is cutting out. Is it the HDMI? Or? Well, yeah. So talk again, sorry. Dennis Debro. Can you hear yep. me now? Mm -hmm. All good. Good. Okay, yeah. You know, Dennis is actually on, on this uh, um, Twitch stream oh. right now. He, he joined. Hello, Dennis. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dennis. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Dennis wrote um, Pac-Man 4K and uh, Climber 5. Oh, yeah. For the 2600. Oh, yeah. Yeah. His... And did, did all, all the uh, all the testing for Caverns of Mars. Oh, Thanks that's awesome. <laughs> so one second. We'll yep. get set so. up here. Um, let me switch back to full screen, John, and get the Atari set up. Meister. There we go. Okay. So, they're all numbered? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're going to start with Lunar Lander, <laughs> um, which was actually not released. Mm -hmm. um, and you made this back in 2005. Uh, did you... Did you? Yes. Yep. That was... Uh, yep. Lunar Lander was on the um, Atari Flashback 2, which was developed by Legacy Engineering with Kurt Vendel. Um Anyway, just want to take a moment to say uh, rest in peace, Kurt. I'm sure we all heard that he passed away a few months ago. He was, he was a good friend, yeah. and uh, he did a lot for the Atari. So, and he had a lot uh, um, as far as me getting into programming. So, uh, inspired me to start with Luna Lander. That was really my first um, foray into really digging in and trying to finish project, and uh, that led to Caverns of Mars and and everything after that. Mm. So. So anyway, so Dennis, actually Dennis and I uh, met with Kurt or we talked with him and we uh, offered to fix some of the games that came on the Flashback 2 that, you know, were decent, I guess, but, you know, certainly need, need some help. Right. And those were um, Lunar Lander. Um, I'm not sure. It's some outside company did it. And the whole thing flickered for some reason. Yeah, um, it wasn't super so great version. Kurt it was a lot of flicker, I, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So 
since it was my first time, I tried to uh, to um, make an Atari game. I tried to disassemble it first and fix it. I went, well, this is not because I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. wasn't really good at that. That's, That's the hard way around. Dennis's yeah. style. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just re redid the whole thing. It took about two weeks. Whoops, and that's why it um. That's why it looked exactly like the Flashback Two version because the point wasn't to make it, it was really just to get rid of the flicker. Mm, yeah. So then I added a few other things and I, I added the color and stuff like that. So, it's a beautiful, um, beautiful. So that's kind of where this came from. Like especially the the oh, really thanks. nice zoom in, um, and the controls are really great. You have to land them to the left a little bit. Do I? Actually, yeah. Not the bottom. No, not that one. Right under, right above the three times. Oh, I see. I see. Low fuel. Stop it. Stop oh, it, stop you're it. going into the yeah. stratosphere. Um, so um, <laughs> this, you started this game. It looks like in 2005, and it has a 2006 date on it, um, and it seems fairly complete. Uh, is there anything you're looking to add to it, yes, or are you, it, you, are you just not wanting to release it, or do you plan to release it? Um, well, I think uh, you know, it's similar to what we did with Avalanche, where Avalanche was you know also complete. When, uh, back in 2007, you know, I just would want to spend a little bit of time putting a cool title screen into it, maybe some more features. I know people have a lot of uh, suggestions of just things we can do and still keep it an assembly game. This one happens to be 8K. The original was 16, uh -huh. um, with and used a super, and used a super yeah. chip. Um, so this is 8K without super chip. Um, uh -huh. So um, I think I'd probably want to keep it just at 8K so it doesn't get too out of control. Yeah. And um, yeah, so yeah, so um, at some point, I'll probably ask people what their suggestions are. I know Nathan wanted to read. Well, actually, I did these graphics. I think. Yeah, that's why they look. So, <laughs> I um, wouldn't say that. They're they're perfectly fine. Nathan is. Well, yeah, I, I, they're simple. Thanks. Well, I guess they're okay. But um, Nathan offered to uh, help uh, make them look a little, a little bit better. Yeah. So. Um, so between that and, you know, just game options, maybe have different terrains, different game modes, uh, different gravity um, styles. Stuff like yeah. That. Yeah. So you can definitely make it a little bit more, um, um, full features are going to crash. <laughs> <laughs> I lost fuel. <laughs> so, so just like the, the champ polish yeah, I, on it, I guess. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, at some point I will really say, I think I, 2021 is really, really packed with uh, releases, so it's probably not going to be until um, 2022 at the earliest. Right. Um, so, but yeah, it's, you've uh, got a lot, lot on the plate right anyway. now. That's for sure. <laughs> yep, exactly. So, so the next one we're going to be taking a look at is Caverns of Mars um, from 2005, um, and that is uh, also an unreleased. Yeah, go for it. Um, so this is the second game you made, uh, and it was supposed to be released, uh, like you said, on the Atari Flashback 2. Uh, and there was a version of Caverns of Mars on the Flashback 2, um, along with like uh, Climber 5, Yars Return, both by Dennis Dubrow. Um, and, uh, and the Flashback 2 is well known for being an Atari 2600 on a, on a chip, which is really, really cool and very happy. Very yes. hackable. Yep. I believe people have like hacked a lot uh, with it. Um, so how did uh, I think you explained how you you got in touch with at games and um, but why didn't this make it on to the flashback too as an update? Yeah, well, yeah, it wasn't actually at games. It was oh. uh, it was Kurt Vandell again at Legacy Engineering. So he actually made the uh, um, the flashback yeah. too. Um, so. So it, was, it was the same deal. So, you know, after I did Lunar Lander, and it took like, like I, said, I think it took me two weeks to do that one, um, Kurt was impressed and said, hey, um, what about Caverns of Mars? And I, I loved playing this back in the 19, uh, 1980 on the uh, 800. So I went, yeah, this one will be a lot of fun to do. So this one's obviously much more challenging. Um, trying to get, you know, mid mid uh, screen repositioning without any flicker mm. um, and no age move lines yep. um i remember there's actually a cool thread on uh, atari age where this was revealed and, <laughs> you know um, anyway it was it was kind of it was fun for me because this was like so a um, lot of challenges like the real first game that i made yeah yeah so um, oh yeah it's great so, yeah so um if anyone's interested here's um here's caverns of bars <laughs> the only known copy oh 
Very rare. On, uh, Atari. Yep, this is as the old Atari label, because Atari did actually announce this. Um, Bob DiCrescenzo, um, Pac-Man Plus did this for me, so it actually has this ROM on this. Um, maybe someday we'll do release a limited number of these if anyone's interested. Oh, I think they would be. Anyway. Yeah. So we're going to move on to the one that actually got released, um, Conquest of Mars. Um, and this is actually your first cartridge game um, put on actual yes. hardware. Um, how did you find the experience of finally having a published Atari 2600 game on physical media 25 years after you proposed your game Mountain Raider to Atari? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was it was quite a thrill, that's for sure. Um, this obviously we decided um, once the F flashback two revision was canceled. You know, I talked to Kurt and he said, "Well, just you can release it, but just to be safe, why don't you change the name and a few of the graphics?" Yeah, so, so that's what we did here. Uh, it's basically the same game, slightly different ship um, graphics, just different name. Yeah, yeah I, th I think the ship looks kind of cool. It looks a little bit more modern, but yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, so it was it was. It was great. It's kind of when I first started working with Al as well, because obviously, you know, once once I had finished the game, you know, we had to get it published. So, um, and it's also when I first worked with uh, Nathan as well. Oh, okay. Um, even though I did most of the graphics here, Nathan did um, come on board at the end and help revise some of these. I think the title screen. Yeah. Uh, Nathan would probably remember. I'm pretty sure he did at least the title screen and a few other the graphics. So. There's not much to these graphics anyway, so, you know, <laughs> so I guess I could take credit for some of them. But, um, but anyway, so yeah, so it was great. That's kind of where I got introduced to uh, Al and uh, Nathan working with them on on these games. So, yeah. so it, was, uh, it was kind of, kind of things to come. So, but uh, yeah, it was, it was very, very exciting to get that release. So. Now that was, that was before I got into or knew really about Atari 2600 Homebrew. What was the scene like back mm -hmm. in... 2006 for Atari Homebrew. Like, did you go to any um, conventions, and how, how big was it? And also online as well. I did actually go to a few. Yeah, I think um, in 2000, I went to one of the CGEs in Las Vegas. I went to a couple of them, actually. Um, that was that was really, really fun. Because you can imagine, you know, you haven't seen this stuff in 20 years, yeah. so, you know, once you go to, like, 10 of these in a row, and you start seeing the same thing over and over again, you know, it's just like anything, and you, you lose a little bit of the yeah. But back then, it's like you're a kid in a candy store. It's like, oh my god, you know, backgammon. I remember <laughs> playing this around, you know, all, everything. Oh, yeah, backgammon. That, um, so, <laughs> yeah, that was great. Actually, it was that was actually a, a funny story when I went to CGE. I went to CGE, actually, I went 99. Wow. I was there in line, and I had um, my brother Mike and I went. Actually, that's the picture that's on um, Manfred Kramer's site. I saw that one. Um, of my my brother and I, we have our matching Atari shirt, so we stuck out. Um, maybe it was two thousand. No, actually, that was two thousand. It said two thousand. Because I remember uh, I just started. on the picture. Um, yeah, year two thousand. Yeah, yeah, because I, yeah, I just started my new job, and uh, I literally had just started it like a month before. The one I'm still oh, at. Wow. So here we are, nineteen years later. And my new boss, yeah, I just started. I went, you know, I know I just started, but I had this trip in August. And I started in June. So I uh, I flew out there and met my brother. And he goes, oh, that's fine. <laughs> so I, I met him and we're, we're, we're in line. <laughs> this was my uh, my movie star <laughs> moment. Because uh, I'm sitting there, second line, and like a third guy, I forgot who it was, but someone was like third line. He looked at me and goes, John, John, John. He's a champ programming guy, because you know champ programming had just stopped like a um, couple of years, like a, a year yeah. before. Wow. Yeah. So it was actually my brother was all beaming with pride. Yeah, that's him. That's my brother. <laughs> so it was, uh, yeah, sounds it, like it, Paul. It, it, it was quite. Uh, and we actually had, we had a when I shut down, we had like a million views on my page. So. Which Whoa. Is a lot back then, that so. that's a huge amount. So, yeah. so the worldwide phenomenon. I was you know good. It's a legend in my own good, mind. Good and so. bad. It got the attention but, of the big wigs, but uh, also gained you some notoriety yeah, in line at CG. It started off just as, you know I'm going to make a few games. And have a little, little bit of fun, but then of course when it gets too big, then people will start. Yeah, you know, that's, that's when you, you can't fly you know. under the radar anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Um, if anybody wants to ask any questions um, in the chat.
to make it stand out, put QUESTION in capital letters and it may make us pay attention more. Because <laughs> it's off to the side for me. Yeah. I've, I've got it there, but... Um, um, so, let's see. Oh yeah, I, I don't know if we got to the answer. What, what was the homebrew scene like in 2006? Oh, it was it was very um, well, it was new. I mean, I'm trying to remember what was coming out at that time, but um, I remember just being very excited. Like, it was, uh, there weren't as many as there are now, so when they came out or people were working on them, they got much more focus and attention. Like right now, I'll I'll find stuff that's been out for two years. I didn't even hear about it. It's, there's so much. Yeah. Which is a good thing, but then you know, it's, unfortunately, you lose a lot of the focus. So. Yeah. But back then, it was like you know, you had all the big weeks, like you know, TJ Thrust was was a big one. I think that came out. Yeah, you know, that was that was here. a big one that came out. You know. Um, yeah. um, are you talking, James? I can't. Hear test, you. test, one, two, one, two. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah. So it was it was all very new. You know, you had to you had the, the dig the Stella list, and that's kind of right. where. A lot of people on there. Bob Montgomery was a, a, a big guy. And I'm trying to remember now. Manuel, yeah. um, you know Andrew Davy. Right. You know all those guys. All the um, guys I started. I'm sure I'm forgetting a few people here. But um, you know, so yeah, it was very, it was exciting. And also, the, probably the most exciting part about that time when I first started was all these new prototypes are being found, like every six months or so. You know, oh, Save yeah. Mary. Um, snow white or elevator action or you know things like that yeah. you know yeah those are probably two years before yeah yeah that um, would be exciting it was, uh, it was, it was exciting people time digging to, things you know, out of their attic like or right. old developers uh around back then yeah, exactly. like moving and then finding these things yeah yeah exactly so it was it was fun so yeah so yeah the homebrew scene was it was interesting because you know when you started new thread everyone jumped on right. it you know i remember like uh um, Caverns of Mars was different in that it was done in secret as well as um, Lunar Lander because it was supposed to be something that we were going to just uh, debut and so I kind of developed that one by myself and uh, Dennis and Kurt did the only testing. Oh, nice. So I think I got a little lack from a uh, video game credit because it was too <laughs> difficult. Yeah, I, I'm very I'm very good at Conquest of Mars, and, so I can get through the whole thing without getting killed. Oh, so I always thought it was pretty that's, easy. Uh, yeah, that's you know, it's a but, challenging uh, game. That, that's why you don't get your own. Touch your own game. <laughs> yeah, you get pretty uh, good at it after a while. <laughs> but, yeah. So, anyway, so I guess I can segue to, to the next game, which is Ladybug. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, because that one, I remember January 3rd, it was like the 2006. Yeah. You know, I said, that's it, I'm going to make Ladybug. I put together a really rough screenshot of the, uh, of, of the maze, and I posted it on Atari Age. The thread is still there somewhere. It was like 50 pages long. <laughs> And I said, I'm thinking of doing this. You know, then everyone jumped on and said, hey, this is how we don't think it's possible. Maybe it is. <laughs> Uh-oh, never say that to John Shampo. You probably need extra RAM. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so I said, okay, well, now, and, now, of course, that was a favorite of mine um, growing up. And it was my mom's favorite game as well. So I was always like, hey, you know, this would be a kind of cool thing to do. Uh, so I made sure that. Uh, so that was, that was actually fun because that was actually done. I felt like that one was done with the whole community. Uh, it was like I was posting updates. I took, you know, um, almost like daily getting feedback from people, testing and stuff like that. So that was uh, that was that was probably the most exciting game I've done as far as like, you know, and then having it released in August of that year. So that was uh, that was, that was quite a thrill. So we have some questions from the crowd. Uh, sure. <laughs> this one's an easy one. Has Paul started to work on the Gorf Arcade T-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> yes actually i just had uh paul and i had our weekly uh stand-up meeting that's what we like to call it um where um yeah we talked all things champ programming and oh wow champ programming i'm dating myself <laughs> um yeah we, we are talking about um getting a um, some t-shirts put into the shop so we're oh, good wrestling with paypal right now and you know getting the uh all the you know all the stuff back end to, set up yeah uh, Exactly. So, but yeah, we're hoping to have everything launched in like January. And I'll, I'll be making an announcement on my uh, um, Facebook page. Excellent. Um, and of course, I, I'll pass the information on to you if you want to mention it. As well, oh, I so. definitely will. I might even send you a promo T-shirt. I'll send a Tanya a um, 
double scored yeah. dungeon. There you go. Promo. There you just eliminated one of my questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another yeah. question is how much time do you spend on 2600 programming on week per week on average? That's from uh, Kaboomeray. Um, I would say probably uh, um, this week I would say 100. <laughs> Jesus. Um, oh my god. But generally, um, I'd say probably like 10 hours a week. Oh, wow. It all depends. It, it fluctuates. Like 10 if I'm just like messing around. But when releases start happening or I get really um, into something like Ro Robotron, like I get obsessed with that for like a month and I basically, uh, you know, so I'll work maybe 15, maybe 20 hours a week on that. So, yeah. um, but 10 is probably a good, good average. So. Okay. Um, just a question for the crowd. Is John's audio still out of sync? Somebody mentioned that. Because that's terribly annoying if it is. I can try and fix that. Let me just try it right now. Am I ahead or behind? Because if, um, that's what you're going to ask and answer it first. <laughs> well, I just, um, reset it, so we'll see. Yeah, you can guess. Anticipate what I'm going to ask. Um, I remember Ladybug, uh, playing Ladybug quite a bit on the Coleco. Yes. Um, do most of your memories of games stem from the arcade, or do some of them come from the fact that games never came out in the Atari, but did on other systems, or is it just mostly arcade memories? Um, Ladybug, actually, that specific one is because of the Coleco game. Uh, that's oh. kind of, if you ever read the, uh, um, dedication for, uh, Ladybug, um, in the manual, um, Back in whatever 1983, 84, whatever it was, a friend of mine had the click of vision. You know, we we all had that one friend that had the click of vision, and one that <laughs> yes, had the exactly. vision, and then everyone else had the Atari. Yep. So um, exactly. He had the click of vision. <laughs> yeah, he he let us borrow it, and that's where my mom got to play Ladybug. And you know, she loved Pac-Man, and she goes, "What's this Ladybug?" Yeah. And she played that, <laughs> and she liked, she liked it even more because you know you have all the strategy involved. Um, that's where she oh, asked yeah, the, the doors. Yeah, she she asked the famous yeah. question, why can't I play this on the Atari? I, went, I don't know. They, they uh, said they're going to make it, you know, because I had that, uh, you know, the Coleco Vision um, ad that said, coming soon, which, you know, oh, yeah. that soon was whatever, 20 years later. So, <laughs> yeah, it just takes a while till you know, the homebrew scene kicks in. Then yeah. it can come out. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, I'm going to mispronounce his name again. As always, Lila Pojenkin Pan Powan. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna call him Lila because the rest of it is very difficult. Uh, on the Atari Age forum says, I want to know if he works as a programmer, uh, if he has any programming education or just self-taught. <laughs> what I need is bigger ears. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Sorry, this is really annoying. You have any headphones? You could use headphones. I mean, they're big and bulky and look crazy but exactly it's like <laughs> <laughs> um i so, do have a um, degree in computer science and engineering from the university of Denver, so that's where i, I really learned uh, assembly language my favorite course was operating systems where we actually had to write like a, a multitasking kernel so it was almost like a windows precursor um wow and it was like one of my i still have the uh, printout of that it's like this thick you know on the uh dot matrix printer so that was actually something i finished like a month ahead of time it was just i was obsessed with it and uh, that kind of just that really got me going as far as uh becoming a fairly decent assembly language programmer and um yeah no learning C. so wow. once so once i got into uh, uh programming pc games i you know the games themselves are written in c but all the uh graphics routines are in assembly so um, as far as my job right now, I am a developer as well, so I've been with this company for like 20 years and done everything from management to um, software architect to software engineer, principal engineer, um, so it's it's good, uh, you know, my role changes every four or five years, so um, keep me... Uh, Keeps it fresh. <laughs> yep, so, so yeah, so yeah, that's... Uh, um, so, de very decent background, definitely in programming, and now you all know why you should stay in school. Um, question from the uh, chat from Captain Classic. Uh, you previously said that Ladybug is the homebrew you're most proud of. Why particularly that game? Um, probably just because um, 
Sports. It's really the first game that, um, I mean, not the first game I did, but the first game that I'd been thinking of doing for a long time. Um, uh. and it was very, very challenging. Um, when I first started it, um, a lot of, you know, not a lot of people, a few people chimed in and said, you're not going to be able to do it on the Atari because there's not enough memory and, um, you can't yeah. do the doors and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, obviously I had to do yeah. some, uh, um, I'd, I'd, uh, have, I'd, yeah, had, you know, I had to have the doors be symmetrical, but I think it still plays like right. right. Um, so, um, and that, and I think just the sentimental, um, value of it, you know, something that my mom would have been proud of as well. So, um, right. Yeah. So yeah, between, between all that and I, I know, and I've always loved the game too. So, um, I think it's a lot of fun. My, my high score is 604,000 if anyone's, uh, Interested and wants to try You're to beat that. Um, <laughs> You've got the six points. and the six hundred four thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Only a hundred yeah. times more. It's absolutely oh, boy. Pain, so, um, but it's uh, so yeah. So I, I think. Uh, Sorry. Sorry. So then there was a very long gap. <laughs> yes. We skipped ahead. The the calendars are pages are peeling off like in a tv show <laughs> cheesy off. tv show yeah and we go to the year 2015 because that yeah. one was in 2006 load up uh, ladybug collector's edition oh that one yep. yep um so there's a fairly long gap between the release of conquest of mars uh um slash ladybug um and ladybug collector's edition in 2015 were you hidden away honing your craft during these nine years for this next incredible streak of homebrew? Or <laughs> was there something that took your attention away? Yeah, well, it was a couple of things. I mean, in 2007, I did start three games. So I did have a lot of work in progresses. I just got burnt out. I started, I did Avalanche, which I did finish. Um, never released it. Um, started Wizard of War, started Moon Cresta, started um, um, Ripoff. Um, so I had a lot of games going. Um, and uh, I just got burnt out. And um, mm -hmm. and my kids, I you know, I had two kids. They were they were at that fun age. So I decided right. to take five years off and just spend time with them. Didn't really do any programming except for occasional proof of concepts um, until mm -hmm. uh, until um, Ladybug Collector's Edition, which I think is that we're looking at now. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, it so there were just... some minor changes, and and it came out with really nice packaging and original Coleco style cartridge. Yep, and it has a different title screen, I think. And uh, yeah, these are all. So this is just something that um, a lot of people have been asking for Ladybug to be released in the uh, Coleco Vision packaging since it was originally planned for that. Um, so Al and I and Nathan all got together and. Uh, Nathan did obviously most of the legwork um, because a yeah. lot of it is just artistic changes. Um, I, yeah, it was a good way for me to get back into programming um, just because it's been so long. So again, just doing the title screen. And, um, yeah, so there it is. So it's and it actually has a. Uh, I think we included a um, reproduction of the catalog, right? I don't know if you ever opened it, but the actual catalog, the Clico catalog, is in there. Right. Oh, very nice. Yeah. yeah I won't so open it. The advertise Ladybug. So, um, so I yeah, think under those. And it comes with the and, numbered uh, cartridges as well. And the yep, white yep. cartridges. Very, very nice. Yep. And each one has its own registration number on it as well. So when you start up the game, it'll say R92 or 75. Right? There were also five, I think, developer copies that were given out. Um, oh, wow. So did, so did you have to, um, I guess you had to alter the code for every single one before you burnt it to the, transferred it to the ROM? Yeah, well, I just, I just wrote an app that um, basically generated 100 ROMs and I sent all labeled oh. ladybug underscore 0011 to do and I sent that to Al. So we had 90, it took like two, you know, <laughs> five minutes to write, just a quick, I knew where the uh, bit, the byte was I needed to change and I just, uh, you uh -huh. know. You know, so I just made it pretty easy. So, um, so yeah, so sounds yeah, so like it's more work for Al than, than you. <laughs> What's that? 
sounded like it was more work for Al then than it was for yes, you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, it's certainly much more work for Nathan too, because he did the whole, uh, you know, he did great. You can look exactly like a game would have done been released oh, yeah. by Clico. So and we had a hundred uh, Clico shells too. So Al had to, I think, I think he needed a different board for that too. So, uh, oh boy, that was fun. It was fun. It was a fun work little thing. Him. Like I said, a lot of people <laughs> were asking for it. You know, I'm not a big fan of just doing cl limited collector's editions, but in this case, I didn't want to compete with my own game. Um, so <laughs> true. And, and it sold out. So they're both like, out um, at the same time. Yeah. It sold out in a couple weeks. So it's, uh, it was obviously something that people wow. wanted. So. How did I get a copy? Oh my goodness! I know <laughs> I it's, I... it's really tough. Yeah, yeah, you get, it's it's uh, there's only. I think of that's the there. first first year, or one of the first years I went to PRG and I just picked it up and happened to buy it. So I was oh, very lucky. Good. I didn't even know that it was like a, a really limited special edition. It was like, oh, Ladybug, actually, that's awesome. Yeah, it actually debuted at PRG. Al and I were just talking about that, um, and so he sold some. So you you probably got lucky. You probably bought one of the. I think 59 were sold at that PRG, so you were one of those. Oh, wow. Then the other 40 wow. went soon after in the store. So, Yeah. Um, lots of people in the chat going, uh, this game's impossible, or this game's impossible, teasing you. Saying, yeah. like, uh, Tempest and Tron. I've actually seen some pretty good Tron um, proof of concepts and playable games for the 2600 already, so you should definitely yeah. check those out. Tempest, yeah. ooh. Ooh, that's that's a that's a tough one. It's hard to draw yeah. the the grid. Yeah, I've I've looked. I'm not a big Tron fan. I mean, I like the movie. I didn't see the movie originally. I brought my kids to see the second one, which I actually liked. I know a lot of people like it. Um, so yeah. I don't not really. I don't have the nostalgia factor. I never played it in the arcade. So I'll I'll let the Tron lovers um, you know, <laughs> make that one. And yeah. the, the proof of concept out there looked really good. So I think. Uh, Oh, and yeah. Tempest, I, I've looked into it, believe it or not. I mean, everyone's looked into it, and it's, uh, yeah. you know, that's, I have too many other, I think that'd be something that you would do just to say, well, you know, <laughs> here it is, kind of, but, you know, yeah. even, I think with the latest technology, you probably make a decent version, but Tempest yeah. is one of those games where, even playing on MAME, stuff like that, without the spinner, I mean, there's nothing like yeah. playing Tempest on a real arcade machine, and, uh, yeah. I think it's going to be very I think that's why people really want it on the 2600 cuz cuz the we've got the driving controller, right? So yeah. you can spin it completely around, but that's pretty low yeah. resolution and Yeah, I don't There's a I lot don't, of challenges, maybe, a lot of maybe, hurdles. Maybe, yeah, I think maybe the trackball might be a better solution for that, but uh Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That would be. But still, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's something I'm not going to I'm not going to take on that one, so. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the next game. Uh, which is Scramble in 2016. Um, yep, go for it. Scramble and Super Cobra Arcade are, in my opinion, two of the best side-scrolling Atari 2600 games. Um, it's incredibly hard to scroll horizontally on a 2600 due to playfield being four times the width of the smallest pixel and only be yep. able to be positioned every four pixels, too. It doesn't even move one pixel at a time. Now, did you specifically take these two games on as a challenge because of the limitations of the system, or what was the no. reasoning behind these two games? Yeah, no, the reasoning was actually um, the Ladybug Collector's Edition got um, you know, Nathan and I all excited about um, doing Cosmic Avenger because that was also advertised. But, oh, let's do this. Mm. You know, so I'll, you know, I think I sent you the, the proof of concept, which I think you showed me. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so it that's where I great. started off. Exactly, and that's this is this is where things turn dark, because this is where <laughs> I turn to the dark side of the DPC plus and uh, Daryl. Oh you know, no! He, he gave me the it's the red. All downhill from here. Or whatever. Exactly, <laughs> because I did do a proof of concept with um, scrolling for the um, Cosmic Avenger, um, which I think um, which came out. I think pretty good. It looks pretty good um, with just assembly. Yeah. Um, but then. Daryl showed me DBC um, plus, and I never kind of went back to that. So, um, yeah. And at that point, so then he um, produced a demo of Cosmic Avenger using the DBC plus um, engine, and I was intrigued by it. And that's when I decided, well, you know, like I'm not a huge fan of um, 
Cosmic Avenger. I think it's really cool, but yeah. I only played it on the Coleco. And I've always loved Scramble. We had a Scramble up at uh, the Sunnyside Farms up to my house. So every chance I had, I'd run up there with my bike and play a game every time an extra quarter. So I always, it's an incredible I always thought shooter. Was a, yeah, that was a, one of my favorites. So I said, well, this will, I'll have the passion to actually see this one through. And, right. and, uh, and since I was learning DPC Plus at the same time, you know, I didn't want to have to, you know, learn something new and then also pretend that I'm a huge Cosmic Avenger fan too. And again, try to inspire. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So and they're so similar you know, that, you know, it'll satisfy Cosmic Avenger fans as well, I would think. Yeah. Exactly. And a lot of these games are, you know, um, as you know, I've mentioned this to you, I don't look at disassemble code. I don't look at, you know, movement tables or anything like that. I just go by the field and, you know, I watch a couple of videos on, uh, you know, this is by memory and also by um, just by watching videos. So to capture that feel, I really got to have a, a connection to the game. And Scramble yes. is a game that, you know, this is one of the games I literally used to dream about. So, you know, it's a little sad, but it's uh, it's true. So it's, uh, I hadn't played it since yeah. probably like 83 or 84, and, you know, this is before MAME, and then MAME comes along. You know, gives right. you a childhood. And then uh, then the Atari comes along, and then you fully regress to uh, being a 12-year-old again. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and, and it is amazing how you're able to capture the feel of these games without doing any disassembly or or looking at the tables or speeds of things and and i'm sure a lot of people like when you're doing releasing works in progress help you out and they say oh this needs to be a little faster or, you should move this up or down or this should be wider um so yep. you do get a lot of suggestions but like when you're making when you're porting a game to the 2600 there's going to be some concessions anyway you have Absolutely. to change things Yep, exactly. If you can capture the spirit of the game, and like, once I had the, um, the scrolling going, and I think moving the ship and the objects in single resolution against the uh, core scrolling, it's. I think it still feels like scramble. I think it's. Uh, you know, it doesn't. It doesn't detract from the actual game and that core scrolling. So, yeah, you know, there, there've been oh, proof yeah. concepts I've done where it just doesn't. It's not working, and I just stop because it, uh, it's not gonna make you feel you know whatever you feel felt when you played the game originally that it's not worth doing yeah. so so we're going to switch over to super cobra arcade which to me um it's very hard for me to tell the difference between these two games because i've ne i never played them both back in the day like they mm -hmm. both seem so similar to me <laughs> yeah um because they're both side scrollers, and it's like, oh, it's a helicopter now. Okay, shoot the fuel, get the fuel, <laughs> go through the cavern. <laughs> um, yep. Uh, so, this Scramble and Super Cobra Arcade seem to be your last non single screen games. Is that due to the type of game or era of game that you're most interested in porting? Like, uh, like everything from before and after these games seem to be well mappy's a little different because it's kind of shifts but it's still kind of a single screen game are, yeah. are these like is it just games that you like is that how you choose them um no this one actually um i think nathan actually talked to me about this one. um i i love uh i, I love super cobra i'd never played it in the arcade i only played it on the another one of those pesky friends of mine lent me a atari 5200 <laughs> Um, uh. Back in the eighties, yeah, he he was one of the rich guys. Um, oh boy, yeah. You know, no, but he was, it was it was great. I I love the fifty two hundred. That's probably um, I would love the twenty six hundred too. Fifty two hundred. I was always I remember playing it at like Sears or wherever it was. Um, so getting to play that for a week and play this, I was like, uh, I loved it. Um, so I think the thought process was. You know, this should just be an easy, you know, to the, the um, you know, to the novice, you would think that Super Cobra is just a hack of s Scramble. This is a complete yeah. rewrite, basically. It's using some of the engine, um, but this wow. is actually, this is the first game. Scramble, I think, is the only game, was well, the only game I released that used DPC Plus. 
Um, I think so. And then CDF, um, CDF without the J was released after that. While I was developing this, I had a, a DPC version that was almost complete, and I couldn't fit everything in there. And you got 4K uh, extra with um, CDF, so I ended up porting the entire thing to CDF. And wow, I worked with TJ, um, you know, Tom Jens, and we came up with a really cool. Um, um, way to uh, pack all the data and the fit because there's a ton of data for these uh, lay, um, levels. Oh, um, into huge there. level so, layouts, yeah. Yeah, it's much bigger. And the positioning and, um, of all the enemies. Nathan and actually, everything. Nathan and Daryl devised a really cool um, converter where Nathan actually stitched together screenshots from main of all the levels, so it was one huge file. Converted wow. it down to four pixel resolution, and we had colored dots where all the like a yellow one was a launcher, red one was this. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Um, <laughs> just dots, and then Daryl wrote a converter that would take these images and spit out the data. So this is exactly the layout, terrain, wow. and location of, of the arcade, and it's it's really cool. Um, it's something I want to probably end up doing with like Cosmic Avenger if I ever do another scrolling game. Um, right. Because uh, it, was, it, was, it was just amazing working with those guys. Because, you know, obviously, you know, I did the development, but without those guys, uh, it would never have gotten done. So. Oh, yeah. Um, three, yeah, so this, uh, this is actually a really cool game. It has many more enemies, has the tanks, it has. Uh, um, this is uh, much more full featured than Scramble, but. I've said this on, oh, yeah. on Facebook a couple of times where people ask which one I play. I said, well, if I'm in the mood for a battle, I play Scramble. And if I'm in the mood <laughs> for a war, I play Super Cobra. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot more coming at you in this one. For yeah. sure. And, and um, Nathan, I think Nathan said, if you want to get good at the arcade games, you can play, you know, John Shampoo's games and you'll yeah. get better at the arcade games because there's, they have the feel of the arcades and, and i think i've i've said that about yeah, Galag Galag yeah 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 galagon yeah. and and i've gotten better at the arcade game by practicing on the 2600 version it's unbelievable it, it, it responds and and acts just like it does in the arcade yeah yeah, yeah. So the, so the, the only who, who are wondering if Tanya doesn't mind playing these games. Oh, not at all. She she likes doing these these interviews. She doesn't have to do anything. I know. But I don't have to games. talk. I drink exactly. wine and play video games. It's it's a wonderful Friday night. Because somebody was somebody was very worried last time about Tanya was being neglected. Because I was being so quiet, and I'm like, no, I'm sitting here playing video games. <laughs> it's the best time in the world. Great. <laughs> Yeah, so I was, I was going to say real quick, the only regret I have about Super Arcade is that I released it yep. um, after Scramble, right after Scramble. Ah, uh, uh, right. So people associate them together. I should yeah. have kept it or, you know, moved on to Mappy first. Um, uh, but anyway, yep. hindsight is... So we're going to, on. speaking of that, move on to Mappy. Oh. Yep. Great segue. Um... So, uh, like other games, Mappy is a game that I don't think people would have thought possible to be able to port to the 2600 for a number of reasons. Uh, the incredible detailed graphics, the music, the number of enemies on one line, etc. Most 2600 developers are able to work on their own for many titles that get released, but bigger games like this are a collaborative effort. Can you talk a little bit about working with a team on these games? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um... Well, first, I, I got to give a huge shout out to Nathan, obviously, Nathan Shrum. Um, he's yeah. been involved in every single one of my games, um, even if, you know, I think Conquest of Mars, I said he did a few of the graphics like, where we were kind of um, meeting each other and uh, getting used to each other. Then Ladybug, he did all the graphics for that and the uh, the artwork. And from there, he's been, he's been my go-to guy. So whenever I have a crazy proof of concept, um, you know, before I, I show it to the uh, rest of the Atari community, I run it by him first and say, well, is this, is this worth pursuing? Is this something I should do? <laughs> and, you know, yeah. I can always tell he's always nice about it. If it's not a good idea, I'm like, well, you know, maybe you should work on this instead. <laughs> um, you know, things like, uh, um, 
like Mappy uh, came out great. Like he, uh, once he did the graphics and we put those in, I started this actually on the way home from PRGE. I started on the plane. I was just inspired. Wow. And I, I got Fired the, uh, up. The <laughs> yeah, exactly. In 2017, because had, we had released um, Super Corps the year before. And um, yeah. I mean, at that show. And uh, um, I started it. I just, I always get the basic stuff and I always, I like to say I purposely put in bad graphics, but I actually do try my hardest. <laughs> um, and then Nathan takes a look at them and he's, he always comes like, oh, I won't hear from him for a couple of days. And then all of a sudden, you know, a zip file will show up with like all the graphics, <laughs> all of them, you know, so. Uh, yeah, the characters get... in this game seem impossible on a 2600. Like the detail of the characters, it just blows me away every time I look at them. They're so tiny like the, the eyes of the mouse and the cat's faces and unbelievable yep. yep no he he captured it perfectly especially when you know one of the biggest restrictions with the atari besides the resolution um is the uh one color per line unless you're going to combine sprites um, that's always yeah. a challenge but you know you look at mappy running around you could swear there's two three you know two, at least two <laughs> colors per line um it's just amazing yeah. and the cats and because he captured the yeah uh, he's got the transparency the, on the eyes and the nose so it's it kind of looks like two colors on a line but it's, yeah, exactly. it's all one color per line it's unbelievable yeah and he uh he captured the um personalities of those guys because mappy is uh, definitely a personality game you know you get a you know mappy the cats goro and stuff like that you know if they look like blobs yeah. it just wouldn't wouldn't feel the same It'd be like <laughs> yeah i'm just running from this red square you know kind of like running from the uh, flashing um yellow square in burger time you know it's not yes it's not in I, I, it's I, just square i knew you, you were referencing that yeah the graphics yeah, in that original burger time are are, are pretty sad <laughs> yeah of course you know they, they, they had certain limitations i probably would have made yeah. um similar limitations if uh you know i didn't have the dpc plus or whatever this is really exactly so, and and and, so, and the cartridge room as well they were limited to like oh you only have 4k or you only have 8k yeah, there you go exactly. and you have four months and 4k that's all you get yeah so yeah M mappy's an interesting one because i never played this in the arcade never even heard of it um until uh neither had i my um foray i had taken a break from video games i think the last video game i bought was probably the atari 2600 and then my next one after that was the first PlayStation. And oh, geez, I, that's I, a leap. Yep. And then I <laughs> bought a um, bought the Namco, um, you know, because I had Pac-Man on it. And I don't know what this Mappy thing is. Oh, yeah. I ended up falling. Yeah, I love Mappy. I went, this is great. So that's where I first played it. It was probably like 95, 96. Um, and actually, I found I was going to send it to you, but it was really cheesy. But it was like, I think it was the first thing I ever wrote in 2600 was I was trying yeah. to draw the roof and the platforms of the mappy level and that's all it is it's just oh. a static screen it's like it's all cut off on the end it's like 270 <laughs> lines it's like it was literally i think it was the first i still have it, it, was a, it was, i found a folder called mappy old but that's all it was was just that so it's kind of that was like probably 90 like 2001 i think so it was a long time oh, ago yeah. so well that's really early yeah. i think the graphics have come a long way on 2600 especially with the advent of um, almost the, the interlacing. Like you can see in Mappy, the blue and the white and the yellow or the orange of the of the building to give yep. the illusion of more colors on one line. But they're, they're so close together that it just, it looks like multicolored graphics. It's just amazing. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. With, uh, with the extra RAM that you get and obviously the ROM and the extra time that you get with the uh, ARM chip, you know, you can yes. do stuff like that. I mean, all that's possible, obviously, with a, um, some of it's possible with just the, the TIA and um, the uh, assembly. Like, you could actually uh, hard code all those graphics, you know, and just, you know, yes. technically you could do it. But then you wouldn't have time to do anything else. So it's, that's really the... Oh, cutting out just one second. I'm going to fix your audio. um so let's see i think there was a somebody said 
I still, oh, Carl G said, I still say Mappy is impossible, even though I have a copy. <laughs> right. <laughs> David Pitfall Crane. <laughs> Keep him out. He's no, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Oh, yeah. So you're using all the tricks. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of room there, yeah. Um, Lila asks a question. Um, I hope he doesn't get overwhelmed with having so many projects going on at the same time. If he almost sees it as an, he almost sees it as an obligation to port these games since he's one of the few, or possibly the only one that could, or else they would never exist otherwise. Um, uh, he says. Um, he said, it might be a weird question, but I can imagine if I had 2600 slash CDFJ expertise. Um, uh, if he has or think he might have any mental condition or diagnosis, asking only because I, I have, and I desperately want to have something in common with John. This might be a totally socially unacceptable question, but how would I know? <laughs> it's it it's it's <laughs> it's benefited all of us <laughs> you can't hear us yet it's it's definitely benefited all of us <laughs> whatever <laughs> condition you have that forces you to churn out game after game for the 2600 <laughs> Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, one second. Not, none of them can hear you, which is very, very strange. So I will fix that. They're like freaking out. And they should be able to hear you now. Say something. No audio or video. There we go. <laughs> now they can see and hear you. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, that was a list of all the um, prototype games that I've been working on. Yep. <laughs> oh, excellent. Yeah, so those will be released next week. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, can you believe I made that one, though? <laughs> I, I can't believe it. Like it everybody thought that was impossible. Like, like literally impossible. Yep, it um, really wasn't. It's just not enough uh -huh. scan lines. Well, what's the thing? Well, I figured out a way to, uh, you know, <laughs> Are you use... using that uh, interlacing mm -hmm. trick that doubles the scan lines on the twenty six hundred. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, using bus technology, you figured out all the bus problems, right? Yeah, Excellent. yeah exactly. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, we're just okay. Gonna... I don't know how what uh, what everybody missed. Yeah, what did we miss? I don't know how far that goes back. Oh, it was probably back to when I was fiddling. That was quite a while. Sorry, everyone. Uh -huh. Somebody spent a hundred bubbles saying no audio or video from John. <laughs> That's James, when I got alerted, I think. James fiddles while John burns. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the cord is very sensitive for some reason. I think it would ten you got up to get Toast more wine. Maybe. The wine is the root it's of the problem. The wine. Yeah. It's the yeah. wine. It's always the wine. Uh, alcohol, al what is it? Alcohol, the cause of and sol solution to all the world's problems. Yes. <laughs> Um, so we're going to move on to Wizard of War Arcade, since we don't know what you guys missed, so we can't repeat it. <laughs> Double score dungeon time! So Tanya's expecting that shirt very, very soon in the mail. Absolutely. I'll get Paul on it. I don't know, is Paul in this chat? I can't tell. So oh. Can oh, he said, somebody said, please repeat all the part about the development and tricks in this game uh, for Mappy. Just quick rundown, I guess. Which is not easy. Run, John. Okay, um, I forgot. I forgot all of my tricks. Um, <laughs> repositioning. Yeah, many yeah. kernel. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> did, did my voice actually get recorded for the uh, the YouTube? So not at all. No, no, it cut out completely. It's like some for some reason I could hear you. Yeah, I could hear you. Just which fine. this is the end result. It goes through everything to get to my earpiece, but somehow. It didn't make it on. It w it's the streaming software. So, okay. things happen. Sorry. Oh, oh, that's the uh, Atari box. Okay, so, this is the first game that you included support for the upcoming Quadtari. Um, the way the hardware works must have been finalized quite a while beforehand to make sure it works for Wizard of War, because Quadtari's still not out yet. Very soon, but still not out. Can you tell us a little bit about the Quadtari and how it factors into some of your already released games and upcoming games? Like, like you've you've had years of time and you've had to almost like nail down the specs well beforehand, right? Uh, yes. Yep. Actually, uh, well, we released this just last year, so we uh, I think we finalized yeah. the spec probably a couple months before that. So um, it was easy to change in the uh, in the uh, the software. But basically, what it is. Uh, I reached out to uh, Nathan Tolber. Actually, I met him at um, at one of the PRGEs. Um, I'm not sure if that one. Or it would have been the one with Matthew, so 2018, because um, that's when I played Wizard of War with my brother Paul. And I said, well, that's it. My next year, I'm going to actually have a, Maybe it was 2015, because I had a demo next year. I don't yeah. know. My, all the years are becoming one. <laughs> Anyways, so, together. Yeah, so obviously, Wizard of War, one of the big things is the voice. The voice takes up... Um, um, you know, if you have the Atari box, then you can't play two players. So, um, so Wizard War happens to be a game that's also best played co-op. So, um, yes. when I met Nathan um, and saw his quad Atari, which allowed you to connect four joysticks, you know, we started talking about how we could uh, modify the spec so you could have two joysticks hooked up to one of the ports. Um, mm. Because his, his original design used both ports for four joysticks, but you couldn't just plug in one for two. So, all right. Yep. We made some changes, um, ones that I'd recommended, um, because originally, basically, the way it works is that you can put the joystick port into, input, into output mode or input mode, whatever it's called, where you actually, instead of reading the joysticks, you can send bytes out. That's how you can choose the side joystick you want to have active or. And then read it. So that's how you switch it. Um, so originally he was doing that through a couple of the directions, like left and right. The bad thing about that is that you had a joystick hooked up to the Quadtari for a non-Quadtari game. Left and right didn't work. It was an app to something else. Um, okay. So then we actually someone suggested on um, one of the hardware threads where we we're trying to get some help to use the um, dump ports um, bit of the vertical blank register which is used to charge the paddles, which can be high oh. or low. So he suggested why don't you use that, since you only have to choose two joysticks anyway. And then you could keep all the directions. So the Quatari as it is now, uh, you can hook up just 
hook it up in just the one port and get two joysticks to that one port. Or you can hook up, hook it up to both ports and have four joysticks onto two ports. Um, and right, and, and which also made room for the Atari Vox uh, yeah, as well. So you yes. can isolate the two joysticks to the first port and the Atari Vox to the second port. Exactly. So and so, all my games going forward are going to support it in one way or another. Even if it's just for alternating two-player, where you can use your own joystick. Now it's right. not really. A so huge you don't benefit. have to pass back and forth the joystick. Exactly. It's not a huge benefit, but it is a benefit. So it's trying to give people a reason to see the the worth of buying it. So obviously the first benefit, obviously, was that you can play a two-player Wizard of War with um, the uh, Atari box plugged in. Um, so that's cool. Yeah. And actually, um, huge benefit. Yeah. I was working with uh, TJ um, and um, Christian Dirty Harry. I don't like saying that, but it's, uh, it's the name. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, they modified Stella, the latest release, so now you can actually hook up. Yes. Uh, my son and I were just playing um, on uh, the Retron 77 with um, a uh, the Quadtari, not the hardware Quadtari, software Quadtari, so you can. Uh, right. Um, Configure awesome. two joysticks on one port, and then have the. Uh, um, then I hook up a physical Atari box to the Retron 77 as well. So. Right. So you, yeah. Play All it. your games. When I boot up uh, Stella now with one of your games, it always says Quadtari found. Yeah. And exactly. you have to go in and go into the settings and specify whether you have a Quadtari or a joystick. So the option yeah. is there, which is amazing. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. So. So then Galagon also supports it as well, um, again, for two-player alternating, but we did um, add a co-op mode for that. Um, and then probably the biggest one that's going to use it is Robotron. It's going to be the first game to actually support four joysticks at once, because uh, that uh, wow. has a co-op mode. And I, no, my son and I played it like that. It's awesome, where both players wow. in co-op can have one joystick to move and one to fire. So it's uh, really wow, cool. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm as as soon as the border opens up, I'm gonna uh, order an Ed Ladin 7800 controller that has yeah. the two joysticks, so I can properly play Robotron finally. Yeah, um, that'd be awesome. Yeah, they're great, great joysticks. Um, question about this: uh, the number of enemies and players on one line in both Mappy and Wizard of War can be quite substantial, and then taken to the extreme in your new release. Um, uh, a zookeeper, which is even crazier number of things per line. Um, do you find there's a cumulative effect in your games where new possibilities for new games open up from tricks you've used in previous games? Like you go, oh, I can do X number of character people per line. Oh, now I can do zookeeper because that's a crazy game with like 15 care, 15 guys on one line. Um, yeah, I would I would say that a zookeeper. Um, I wish. Zookeeper is actually really good because it, it can have like, um, I think you can have like 15 things on the line at once, but obviously it gets very flickery. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did, I was dabbling in some, um, since a lot of times in, in Zookeeper specifically, you know, you have the animals running in the same direction and they could be the same animal. You know, I was working on this way to try to have them when they come out, have them space 16 pickles apart. Or 32, so right. when they hit that bottom, they can do some multi copy. And, and probably yeah. in retrospect, I probably should have spent more time doing that, but I'm a bells and whistles kind of guy oh, really? also. So, what happens in which this is a I probably shouldn't do this, but I get the game kind of working, and then I do all yeah. the bells and whistles, like you know, the scoring screen and you know, all the cool things. Then I run out of ROM. It's, it's like this is the mental, <laughs> this is the mental condition we were talking about. And then I spend <laughs> the next month, you know, trying to rework everything and squeeze you know all their stuff i'm supposed to put in the game into the game and then right. at the end i end up uh, overshooting and then i get a little bit more room um so yeah so yeah. anyway to answer your original question yeah the uh i have a sprite engine that i use for all my games that started with um, scramble which is okay you know every single time i add a new kind of cool feature like a multi a uh, double wide multicolored sprite you know with the uh, overlaid sprites where now i can just drop it in and say i want you know the gorf you'll see it in gorf you know i want the gorf to be of two overlapped sprites i can just add it right in um you know okay i want this one to be a combination of a sprite and a, and a missile that changes direction on every single line and the width you know which i use not robotron right really 
I say Robotron, I mean Robot War. Um, <laughs> so that What's engine, Robotron? that one I actually had to spend a lot of time optimizing because Robotron at some point in the game has over a hundred things moving on the screen, every frame. Yeah, and, it's intense. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, so that was that was that's insane. So I had to actually, uh, you know, step back, which is good. So every time, so now I have a very very optimized, stable, flexible engine that you know I can uh, use for other games as well. So. Yeah. We're gonna move on to Galagon. Now the reveal of Galagon in Zero Page Homebrew is uh, was an incredible moment for me. <laughs> as as anybody could see if they watched the video because i had this poster behind me and i love galaga um and you didn't really know how much i loved galaga at the time and i didn't know it was going to be galagon that we were going to be revealing so it was like just this this clash this culmination of things it was just incredible um and this was on the more extreme end of revealing a game to the public where mm -hmm. they didn't even know what it was. Nobody knew what it was except for like beta testers and people worked on the game. Um, how do you approach letting people know which games you're working on? Because I can see how expectations could be high if you talk about one of your games too early. And yep. they expect it like, when is it coming out? When, when you said you were working on it. Yeah, I know. I'm getting a lot of that for, for kicks, um, <laughs> which I don't want to regret <laughs> showing that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, Galaga, Galaga was an interesting one because it was one of those things where I just woke up one day and I said, you know, I've been thinking about Galaga for a long time. You know, I know that I can get the um, enemies in formation because they've done it in Galaxian. So, um, you know, Atari full credit or GCC, whoever did it. Um, yeah. So I looked into how they did it through the magic of Stella and... I ported that over. I had my Starfield simulation in um, in Mooncresta, which we'll see at some point. So I combined the two, and I went, hey, this actually kind of looks pretty cool. And I sent it to Nathan, and Nathan was like, oh my god, this looks great. Of course, the graphics weren't that good. Um, but anyway, so in the Galaga instance, it was literally, I think, five weeks from proof of concept, like the day I wrote it, to the reveal. So there was no time. To wow. It's like we just started and we went this is really cool i went well as i was getting excited when I, I want to show everyone this he goes well it's and then nathan gave me all the sprites and boy you know it and since i had the original code from galagon which we saw early in the show from my pc days you know i pulled yeah. that over and it's written in c which is what you can write in the arm as well obviously you can't port it over directly but the uh, resolution yeah. is very um VGA is 320 by 200, Atari is 160 by 200, so all the patterns and everything, yeah. I just divide by two. And it basically, like, oh, wow. fit in pretty well, so um, that was, yep. uh, actually, the Atari screen is actually bigger, because it's 208. I do 208 for most of my games. Um, oh, okay. So, that's, uh, so as far as that, you know, um, I think people appreciate a uh, reveal. That's why I only do one a year, so I try not to hide things from people, because like everyone else, I get excited when I see someone like, you know, uh, like Philip announcing like uh, um, Chaotic Row in the Burger Time or, you know, um, right. Um, Zevius, you know, um, games like that, you know, exactly. like Chris's Zevius. Um, yeah. Seeing those games being announced, I get excited just like everyone else. So, you know, it's not. Yeah. Want and some of them know. have huge development cycles, like years and years and years before they're done. And you're like, oh, yeah. isn't it out yet? Yeah. Exactly. Well, probably that's one of the issues i have is that when i start a game i get very anxious about finishing it so okay that's why um, i try not to uh, start too many games at once because i do get overwhelmed if there's too many that i'm working on at once so um that's why i get yeah. kind of kind of cranky you know like okay i gotta get this done <laughs> and, uh, and it's just, well and so, like, whatever Gal motivates you i guess uh, not good for was, you but good for us <laughs> yeah, I started Galaga in April, or March 31st, I think, and it was released in um, October. So that was that was a fairly quick. Uh, That's quick, uh, unbelievable. And then I had something like Zookeeper, which was driving me insane because that was like basically two years that you know didn't work on wow. it the whole time, obviously. But uh, that was uh, that one was starting to get to me because you know I wanted uh, wanted to get it done. 
Because if I don't I think anybody any yeah, if I don't release it, I keep working on it. And then just become uh, what? Insane, so that works. I think any other programmer would be just ecstatic about finishing Zookeeper in two years. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. oh it took so long, it's terrible. Oh. Omega Matrix says, sorry late to the party, but want to give a shout out to John Shampo, one of the best programmers out there. Oh, thanks. Hey, Omega, Ma Omega Matrix. Really nice here. He, he, he's a great programmer too, so uh, he, he's oh, helped yeah. me out a few times as well. So it's, uh, yeah, that's that's the great thing about this community is that you know, it has a Champ Games name on it. You know, there's so many people that contribute to these um, these games. Uh, you know, Ross oh, Keenum yeah. did the sound for this. It's like that's another reason why I was able to do it. I always get frustrated because I'm not that good at doing sounds. That's why I made that editor. Um, yeah. But you know, once you know, having people like Nathan to do the uh, graphics and finding someone to help out with the sounds or any of these games always inspires me to to, to work on. So. Oh yeah. Um, Flackets asks question. Uh, with all the flickering, is hardware collisions completely are hardware collisions completely ignored? Yes. The only hardware collision I've ever used in any game was in, I think, Lunar Lander and Conquest of Mars. No, I should say, right. and Avalanche, too. Um, I don't use them in the okay. bag because of the flickering as well. Um, so, yeah, this is all software. Again, with the arm, again, I'm not trying to, you know, um, downplay it, but, you know, obviously with the arm, you get a lot of extra time in, you know, between yeah. frames to do all these comparisons. So, um, Right. Yeah, so I, I it's all software um, collision. I actually do some pixel level collision detection as well. I overlap bit mass. And, and so oh my god, really? I do, that, I do that in Robotron, which is surprising. I, I had to do it because they're all kind of odd shaped and I didn't want any cheap desk. So, uh, really why, so the um, hitboxes aren't square all the time. They're like pixel perfect. Yeah, well, of course, you know, I'm smart about it. I do a bounding box collision detection first. And if it doesn't match that, I throw it out, and then I do a, you know, a pixel overlap kind of thing. So we just do an or. Oh wow! So we're going to move on to Avalanche now, which is a uh, new in the Atari Age store for pre-order right now at an Atari Age store near you. Um, so Avalanche seems to be a huge departure from what you normally work on. Uh, one, it's a f oh kitty. Oh, what's that kitty's name? This is Judy. 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 Juniper. Yeah, it's a Judy. Oh, oh. nice. What a good. Yeah, she's my sweetheart. We got her when she was like six weeks old. So. Yeah. Hey. She'll she'll find that earbud for you. I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know she stole. She actually uh, took one of my um, Harmony um. Oh. I call those things the uh, SD card that had all my games on it. I can't find it. Yeah. Oh no. Inside her stomach. No. <laughs> right. No, it's probably batted under a fridge or something. <laughs> yep, I know. That's it's more likely. The worst is my, my girlfriend Maureen uh, works on uh, puzzles all the time. And we had just gotten Junie oh, and no. she <laughs> would always steal like a piece. So you finish the puzzle and there's always one piece missing. So somewhere in this house is a pile of like one piece of a puzzle from like five different puzzles and my uh, yeah. SD card. So. <laughs> <laughs> all in one place mm -hmm. that sounds, so, that sounds accurate. it works yeah so avalanche was uh, i wrote this game in this is part of my 2007 burnout um um tour mm. where i did yeah because it's a 4k game and a paddle game like it's a your first paddle game or first and only paddle game first and, and only, um, yeah. this yeah and this is what kaboom was inspired by yeah, um, exactly. This so, is an arc, yeah, this is an arcade game. What this came about because um, I was working with Kurt again on another promised um, flashback. Something else was going to come out, or whatever. And he reached out to me, um, and I'm, I'm not blaming Kurt for that, by the way. It was always, you know, you know, at games or someone like that. There was always a reason why things right. didn't get released. But so I just went to the killer list of video games, clov.com or org, <laughs> whatever it is. I'm sure we've all been to there, right? Um, and I just yeah. Oh, yeah. filtered on Atari and I saw Avalanche the first thing that came up. I looked at it and I went, yeah, that's something I can probably do. Um, and that's yeah. basically, I'd never even heard of it before. So I you know, downloaded the ROM yeah, for name 
played it, and then um, I first thing I thought of was, um, you know, how am I going to do 40 rocks going across? Well, it happens to be exactly 40 in the arcade. Uh, I think most people oh, would have wow. tried to do like maybe um, sprites or something like that. Um, but yeah. I said, well, I mean, they're just rocks anyway. So I think they had that little <laughs> alternate pattern was kind of cool. So, and yeah, rather than having a straight line of them, which you wouldn't be able to do, well, you could yeah. use your zookeeper trick, I guess, and, and flicker them back and forth and get the lines. But that's a more elegant way is al alternating them up and down. Especially in, a, in 4K, like what, what you just described in Zookeeper would be something that would probably take up too much time, um, you know, you screen rolls yeah. and all this other stuff, so, or take up too much ROM, so. Um, so yeah, so this is yeah. just meant to be a 4K game, and uh, again, be able to learn how to program the paddles, and just so everyone knows, it's not this jittery on uh, the real game, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's your know, emulator or whatever, so. This is my paddles, they're getting uh, better, but uh, they need, they need some jittery. maintenance. They do, yeah. 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 So definitely a little crazy. But anyway, so yeah, so this, uh, this is kind of cool. Like, so yeah, so I basically uh, took about, it took a week to write this and then I just put on the shelf because it never, um, things fell through with Atari again. Um, yeah. And then I spoke with Al. We've actually been talking about releasing this for probably like five years, maybe five or six. Oh, wow. Um, and then finally we went forward with it. And then uh, Tom Jens and I, um, actually Tom, he's the master at, I wanted to keep this a 4K game so I could, ex, um, you know, kind of get get back to my roots here um, and take a break from the uh, ARM programming. So um, TJ, uh, he went for a few rounds of, uh, when I say a few, I think it was 21. I have a copy of each one of them. Um, every, <laughs> every time I said, I need five bytes, I need six bytes, I need seven more bytes. Um, so he'll, he, he'll squeeze he, out he a couple in, more bytes for you. Yeah, so in 4K, we're able to squeeze in a... You know the Atari Age splash screen. We got the um, uh, wow. We got the uh, uh, cool title screen. We got save key support in it. Um, wow. We got three skill levels. Um, yeah. So uh, we were able to put in a bunch of stuff. We actually even when you press reset on this, it's similar to Super Breakout, where it'll um, change the type of sound effects that are played during the game. So if you hit every time oh, you hit reset, really? it'll go doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, kind of like a. Uh, um, um, Super Breakout does. Oh yeah. Yeah, so you can yeah, choose what kind of effects you have. So it's kind of a little, little neat little thing in there. So. And it's, it's for you. There you yeah. Go. It's also two player, two player alternating, and you have these three skill levels too. So. so. Oh, I was even nice. able, Lots I was of good gonna, um, I was even able to put in that Champ Games um, special logo, which always takes up. I'm always. You know, it's it's always on, on the chopping block because it takes up like a hundred <laughs> bytes or whatever to do, because it's a special kernel, yep. to get a special thing. Maybe not hundred, it's like fifty. You're probably staring like, oh, at it, going, mm, "I want that hundred bytes." Of, yeah, I'm gonna have to get rid of the champion <laughs> thing, and but you no, know, it's it's made it every day. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Lilla says, has he ever shown any of his games to the old Atari programmers at PRGE? Do they ever come by the Atari Age booth and check out the homebrews? That would be pretty awesome. So any old school programmers you've talked to? Oh, yes, yes. I've talked to uh, David Crane, Dan Kitchen, Gary Kitchen, Joe Decor. Um, he's the guy that, uh, one of the Harvard guys in the original Atari. Um, Howard yep. Scott, Scott Warsaw. Um, but... Mostly, I, I did a show Dave Crane, um, Mappy, and Dan wow. and um, and Gary. They were very impressed. Of course, I, uh, it was a little bit of envy in the sense that they wish they had that technology. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it was great to talk shop for them. So I immediately let them know that you know this oh. is not, this would not have been possible back in the day. Um, oh. you know, what, what kind of it was, uh, what it was using. Well, but of even, course not. Yeah. Even with the limited TIA um, um, capabilities, you know, two sprites. Um, low resolution uh, play field ball and two two missiles. You know, it's still a challenge to try to get. Um, you know, yeah, it, you still have to use game. those basic building blocks that the yep. Atari gives you, no matter exactly. what. It so, always comes down to that. No matter what. And, exactly. and it also wouldn't be possible without David Grain because he's the one who kind of kickstarted the the DPC, adding a chip to the to the cartridge, right? Yeah. No, he was very. Uh, he was. He was happy to hear that I was using, because besides Pitfall 2, Mappy, I may be wrong on that, it was the only other game using the DPC chip for music. So I may be wrong on that. But, oh. 
Um, so oh, wow. he was actually pretty impressed with that. So I, I explained to him how, how we did actually, you know, because Mike Haas, I was muted during that part of our conversation about that. But obviously he had done um, the, the music originally for Mappy um, outside of uh, using the DPC. So he had learned it on, on his own. So and him and Daryl really helped me get up to speed on that. So it was, uh, yeah, the music's really, really impressive in Mappy, and it sounds so great. It's got yeah, that, actually, that kind of Atari buzz that the, the DPC puts into it. Yeah, exactly. And I um, I did d develop a really cool tool um, in Java for this. It actually will take a MIDI file and convert it to DPC, um, a three-channel DPC, um, oh, which nice. is kind of neat. So, yeah, so that because we had to do that because we had some of the... Mike had done some of the songs, but then we found like the high score tune and stuff like that. And we went, well, we ran it through this utility and it spit out all the all the data for us. So I should probably make that, um, maybe post that in the development form. I think other people, if they ever want to do that. Again, the only oh, restriction yeah. or the only drawback is that you need to use five cycles literally on every scan line to, uh, to have uh, it play. More, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's yeah. quite intensive because <laughs> it has to like almost play the waveform in real time right that's exactly what it's doing so yeah and uh yeah i think you would have to use dpc plus too with the fast fetchers as well so right you know, um i'm not sure how dave was able um, to do it but yeah but anyway, so. so dennis debro asks uh what was added to the release of avalanche versus the original from around 2005 so what enhancements what major enhancements have you added? Yeah, I would say, um, well, we, we had a lot of bells and whistles like the splash screen, um, the uh, um, the Atari splash screen, the enhanced, um, what do you call it, a title screen. Um, it has save key support, yeah. so it will save one score for each skill level. It also has three skill yeah. levels, um, you know, novice, standard, and advanced. Um, and then the difficulty ramping and the... Uh, um, just the overall polish of the game is much better now. Um, sound effects, additional sound effects. Um, so yeah, so it's uh, it's definitely a lot. Considering we the original was 4K with only like 100 bytes free, and we were able to put all that in and still keep it at 4K it was monumental. And again, I want I want to thank uh, Tom for that. So yeah. Oh, and um, for our background, we have a scrolling background that actually ripped from Galaga the two <laughs> to the two star fields that you alternate if you're oh, really? able to see it on your stream there mm. yeah so it well, goes okay, yeah, I back it. and forth oh that is cool yeah it's awesome I was wondering what that was <laughs> yeah that is straight from Galagon yeah. oh sweet yeah I had to erase the ship and erase erase things and then put it with uh, just the blank black background and then I layered it and scrolled it upwards Nice. Yep. Yeah, that that's that star field was really cool to do. That was when I had the enemies in place in the star field, and that's what I sent to Nathan. That's when he said, "Okay, we got to finish this now," because that was a uh, that, that was quite <laughs> thrilled to get that working. So, actually, it's been a again. I, I use the same uh, technique that I use in Mooncrest, uh, obviously, but uh, I was able to expand upon it a little bit with the extra resources. So. So the next game we're going to jump to is Zookeeper 2020. Ugh. Not with the paddles, we aren't. Let's change those out. Could try it with the paddles. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah, spin around the outside with the paddles, yeah. yeah. And then jump back and forth. It's yeah. just, uh, there's It'll no up. Work. There's no up. There's <laughs> no down. <laughs> there you go. Of course, you wouldn't be able to continuously go around. You'd have to turn. <laughs> what just happened? Can you restart? What? Oh, did you start something wrong? I don't know. It, uh, I didn't click anything. No. It was just being silly. No, 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 it's fine. Okay. Just when you switched it. So just one second. There we go. Zookeeper! <laughs> So, this is in the Atari Age Store for pre-order as well. This incredible game uh, that also could never be done. It's an impossible, another impossible game. Just look at all those bricks. How can you draw that many bricks? <laughs> this, I believe, so, is the final version, right? I sent you? 
Is this the one? Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, just, there's so many things, the, the music, the sounds, the, the crazy, this game has such crazy sounds in the arcade, it's like, it's so weird, the sounds, yeah, and you're able to replicate really, uh, them really it's well. It's a unique game, that's for sure, I'd never played it back in the day, <laughs> this I was introduced to in MAME probably, um, late 90s, early 2000, I love it, I think it's a great, it's a great zone game. Oh. You know what I mean? Where you can just yes. like play and just oh. zone out, just jump in those guys. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. So um, um, I got inspired to do this. I know very it's good precision story. too, and What's high that? scores. It's a game of of precision and and huge scores. It's it's quite fun when you get those big jumps. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Nathan's the master at the at the at the big jump. He's... <laughs> Jumping those lions. Yeah, exactly. So. This, yeah, so this game was interesting because uh, um, I got inspired. It's, it's the funniest things that inspire you to do something. But when we were working on the Mappy logo, which originally, I don't know if yeah. you've ever seen the old version of Mappy logo, it was just not that I'd given up yep. on having it five different colors, but I kind of gave up. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the placeholder. It was just uh, the rainbow colored, but it was just horizontal. Um, but I was right. I wanted to really do each letter in a different color. Um, and I worked with Tom again, TJ, and uh, yep. we figured it out. I came close, and he came in. He, he uh, <laughs> I pitched the first eight innings, and he came in and, and pitched a scoreless <laughs> night. Um, but anyway, we were trying to make the M a little bit wider, and I could see when we were doing the interlacing, I could see a little line there. And all of a sudden, I went, we could do that with the bricks. I know you could do that with the bricks. Um, <laughs> Because I was finishing Mappy on, um, that was 2018, for PRGE. And then right. on the plane ride home from PRGE, it's a long <laughs> plane ride. ride. So everyone knows. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm in Connecticut um, in the USA, and uh, PRGE is in Portland, which is 3,000 miles away on the other, other coast. So it's literally it's like a nine hour, 10 hour flight with connections. To that, so. And I say right. the plane ride home, I'm talking about, you know, probably the a full week's worth. Exactly. Yeah. So, and um, anyway, so I decided to uh, mock up the bricks being drawn, um, the play field with the alternating, to see if I could get that to look like like it does. And it looked, I think, it, I think it looks great. Um, it for people that are using the flicker, you can flip the uh, left right difficulty switch to see it solid so it doesn't do that uh, it's the right difficulty switch yeah right? yeah right difficulty switch. so if it bugs yeah. people you can turn it off i mean it's not as detailed but still yeah exactly see. yeah so that takes a while to flicker so um, old school bricks <laughs> breakout yeah. bricks yeah but yeah i think especially if you're gonna play on like stella or on um it looks great on real hardware i think it does anyway um Oh it's yeah. Really on, 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 even on, the even restaurant, on the, which, you know, a CRT. Yeah. Oh, wait yeah. one second. Yeah. We've lost power. I've lost power on my earbud. But I have a uh, hardware backup, so. Not my earbud? Oh, actually, yes, I do. <laughs> and I'll just get the headphones just in case. Yeah. That's what you get for buying the cheapest earbuds you available. You can find on Amazon. You can pull it out. I'm not, not stopping plans. <laughs> game is Harry. And we are back. So yeah, an ac accidental line in another game spurred a whole game. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and, and I haven't just loved the zookeeper. So once I got it going, I showed, uh, I got the brick part working. Um, yeah. Which is cool. Every, every proof of concept I keep, by the way. So um, there's oh, like nice. probably... I probably have like 300, um, you know, intermittent bills of uh, zookeepers. So you can see like <laughs> the first one, how it started, and then where it goes from there. So, but once I sent it to Nathan, he thought it was really cool, and he uh, then uh, started with the once we got the animals and Zeke going, um, uh, that's where it just really took off. So, has has any other game that you that you're aware of used that trick of alternating? play field side by side to give that that line because I, I don't remember another game um i think champ games 2 in common does it 
Oh wait, that's uh, oh, well. that's one of mine. You're right. <laughs> no, not, not more that, bricks. Oh, not, I, now I, you're. I, I, just, I think it's a cool effect, though. So. Yeah. So I, I did you did you make a go through all the games that you know of and make a list of every game that has bricks in it and no. start going hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just uh, Toon Tooncom is uh. I was fascinated by the game in the arcades back in the 80s. I loved it. So yeah. Um, once I did this, while I was doing this, I was already thinking of that one. I'd love to do Toon Com. I think they did a decent version on the 2600 version. It's just a different kind of game. It's good. a different game altogether. It's still a good one. Um, but um, yeah. I would like to see a, I would like to see a, an arcade version of that. And that's why I've started it. So I, don't know, I have no idea when I'm going to do it. But um... <laughs> Oh, but I, I've got some questions uh, when we take a quick look at Tutankhamen, or Tutankham. Um, so Kohog from the Atari Age Forums asks, Have you ever done a designer diary, given a post-mortem presentation, posted source code, or anything I can consume that would help me learn how Champ, Champ Games makes these amazing games? Uh, um, there is a good noob Sorry. tutorial for 2600, but if the next more advanced step uh, got some great educational material. It would be much appreciated. Yeah, um, I don't have anything specific. I know Daryl. I learned a lot from Daryl. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of stuff out there about the advanced programming, which is very, very mm -hmm. helpful. Um, but yes. yeah, if, if I've helped out um, like Dinoid. I helped him out get started as well. We actually talked to PRGE. It was great just to chat with him. We exchanged um, messages on Atari as well. So I'm more than happy to help people um, get up and running. Um, but I am considering at some point, um, you know, maybe uh, on my website or Facebook or some of that, you know, start my my daughters into like videos, um, you know, doing video production, stuff like that. Maybe putting together some postmortems of, of games um, and more uh, tech from a technical standpoint. So I think uh, I think it'd be right. cool for, for people to hear that. Maybe I don't know. But... Yeah, because Daryl Spice Jr. has some really good um tutorials in the club that he runs if um Quahog wants to look at that because uh, yeah, i know he's he's doing some lessons like he's got them outlined dpc plus and then cdf and bus and he's got different categories and so that's a really good um really good place to look for <laughs> you're looking at tanya playing <laughs> Does, uh, does Tanya know you level. need to like well, you be have to far back the right, from the right uh, um, cage to yeah. jump over? <laughs> yeah, you have to be at the the right the point. right point, yeah. and I, I, yeah. I barely ever get to that level to practice it. So it's shall okay, be. so yeah. we're gonna move on to yeah. to Robot War twenty six eighty four as it's named this week. Yep. Um <laughs> that's actually the final 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 name. So okay, yeah. good. Yeah, honestly, I would, I, would love, in, I would love to call it Robotron two thousand eighty four, but you know. Yeah, I, I gotta respect yeah. Al's wishes. You know, he's the one that puts oh, his yeah. neck out in the line, you know, to publish these yeah. things. So, if, uh, mm. you know, if we have to nobody call wants their game print, pulled so. after a week, you want to keep your game in the store. Every everybody's happy that way. Yep, exactly. I think twenty six eighty four has a good, cool ring to it. A shout out to the twenty. You saw the eighty four in there, and it's a shout out to the twenty six hundred. So. Yeah, exactly. It's a nice, nice mix of everything, and it's still fairly obvious what it is with robot war especially if the uh, picture accompanies it um so there was a ma massive excitement beyond the release of this game and it's also another game that people never thought possible to bring to the atari 2600 the amount of action that's going on on the screen is astounding and the use of play field for the grunts was ingenious and probably the only way this game could be made um it's sometimes these little things like using play field for enemies that makes games click in your mind is is this are these the little things like the bricks for uh zookeeper and using playfield for those guys does that sometimes spur on games or do you look at games first sometimes or is it a big mix yeah um well for robotron um this just happened to be there's like a retro you know pub that has like video games and beer great combination um in province <laughs> yep. so it's, I went with my buddy, and he was a big Robotron fan as well. And we just started playing, you know, the real arcade game, the two-player, and yeah. probably like an hour. I just loved it. And I went, this is a great game. It's very tough. Anyway, so that's kind of that happened right before, right before I got up one day, like I said, and I just said, hey, you know, I wanna. I've always thought about 
how it would be with the play field if I could do all you know different colors um, mixed in there, so it's not just solid blocks. It would kind of give them at least a little bit of character. Um, my yeah. original ones, actually, it's funny. I should show you sometime. I actually had the robots were actually three play field pieces long, so they had arms and a head and oh, jeez. <laughs> That's they were huge. huge. <laughs> but obviously, you, you didn't have the flicker, but they were way too big. I went, well, it's too bad. Then I tried it with two. I have them, like, stepping. Yeah. And it was still too big because, you know, it's just the horizontal resolution of the um, 2600, just too small. And I went, well, I'm just, yeah. we're just, it's just going to have to be one. And people are just going to have to accept the fact that if you want Robotron, <laughs> the grunts, I mean, they still feel like grunts like when you're running around and there's like a hundred of them chasing you you know you're still oh, blasting yeah. away so and if you look at the original arcade game they kind of move like that they don't move they do. smoothly like the other characters so they they do this stepping motion that you see yeah. with the play field exactly so once that when um, i knew that as well obviously so once once that happened i said well you know if, if all it is is just a minor graphical downgrade not really losing any play um you know gameplay uh mechanics by doing that then i think it's worth doing it. so uh, um oh, yeah, yeah so so um to do this this is actually interesting because i have a my sprite engine and i developed a play field engine on top of this so they're running concurrently so the um so you see all the sprites are being um rendered but then the uh right. um, grunts and actually your vertical missiles the explosions and the um, electrodes, which are the blinking ones, are all being rendered in a play field, uh, almost like a play field sprite engine. Um, okay. Yeah, so you see how things explode. That's all like a play field. Um, wow. And I get different colors on each one. Those are the electrodes and the, um, um, what do you call it? The uh, grunts are flickering at 30 hertz. So on one frame. Right. It's the color of the grunts and the other for flame, um, sorry, flame, sorry. On frame, it's the color of the electrodes. And then I use those mixed colors for other sprites, so. Yeah, there's a, just a ton going on. Um, so you said there's like a hundred, up to a hundred different items, characters, things you have to keep track of at once. Yeah, that's, and that's just a start level. If you're not quick enough, then, you know, obviously the, uh, or the, what are those things called? The uh, forks and you know the all the, the you start seeing like tanks and yeah you know, every, it, oh it yeah get, they start multiplying and that, spreading so. out yeah yeah so it's uh, so crazy so but yeah uh, it, 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 this is probably my most uh, fun that I have playing games on the Atari. My son and I love it. He loves it, um, and we uh, we play uh, the two-player co-op mode. And oh, nice. it's easily waste a couple hours playing this. It's, it's a lot of fun. So, oh yeah, you, you won't be bored playing this. There's yeah, just, no, so it's, much uh, going on. It definitely gets your heart <laughs> racing. You know, like once you're done, I gotta like, uh, you know, I have to go yeah, do yoga, yoga is, or something like amazing. that. It's just to get my heart rate down. <laughs> oh yeah, and the the characters coming in on the screen and the explosion is is just unbelievable like sideways explosions and vertical explosions it's incredible thanks yeah um, this, Lilla, a lot, lot from of fun. The... so this is a this one's like 99 percent done i got everything i oh, want nice. in this um and we were originally supposed to release this in november um you know uh, it's, yep. been, it's been a 2020 has been an odd year so uh, yeah, everything slows ribbon. down this yeah. year. Yeah, the like Avalanche was supposed to be released in spring and Zookeeper in the summer. Yeah. But everything got pushed back. So we're going to release this in, in March. So if we can get the uh, the artwork done, David uh, Exton is doing the uh, the label. Um, he's nice. done great work. Um, so looking forward to getting this one out, um, out for people to play as well. So. Um. Uh, now we're going to move on to the proof of concept and work in progress games, which are yeah. going to go probably pretty quick because they're yeah. pretty quick. <laughs> I think I send you like 30 so, of them, so. Yeah, <laughs> so not too many, you know, it'll yeah. only take next three hours, so hang in tight. <laughs> no, it won't take that long before we're, we're there, so don't, don't go yet. Because um, the, so 
there's a number of games at various stages. Um, here's the ones that you have revealed. Rip Off, which we've shown mm -hmm. on the stream. Elevator Action, which is a bus game, which we have talked about and showed on the stream as well. Uh, Cosmic Avenger, which we have shown on this uh, stream as well. Um, Champ Sports Baseball, which we're not going to show. Yeah. <laughs> and you have talked yeah. about it. If everyone knows, yeah. yeah, we're planning. I'm trying to get Nathan to do the graphics. Nathan, are you on there? <laughs> um, tap, 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 Nathan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we've been obviously very busy with other things, with all these other games. So but, oh, yeah. um, we're hoping to have a playable version by spring training or at least the opening day, which would be for you people. That'd be good. Not not in the U.S. On. That's uh, April, and we're hoping okay. maybe uh, um, to have it done by the World Series again. That being like October, so but who knows? Nice. 2021 is a very very packed year, champ games wise. So we don't know, but that's kind of the plan right Lots now. On the table. So. But anyway, sorry. Yeah, and then uh, champ sports hockey as well. And I'm guessing both of these will be taking advantage of the Quadtari a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Those will be true four player games where you can actually have, again, I should say that Robotron 2684, you could actually have four people playing it one, you know, if you wanted to. <laughs> you could. Which actually would be pretty fun. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so these are all, you know, one of the things we want to bring to that is uh, true four player games where you have two people in offense, two in defense, whatever. So um, yeah. Oh, should, that'd should be, be so amazing. Four player hockey. On yeah. The I'm looking forward to that. So. Um, so the first one we're going to show, this is uh, an exclusive. This is Kix. Um, but we're not going to load it up yet. No. Nope. Nope. Um, because <laughs> I don't know how many people out there know what it looks like. But uh, we're just going to show what the arcade looks like really, really quickly. Uh, yeah, we should also be case. clear that, uh, you know, the, this is a... Proof of concept is probably five like percent done, so there's not much to show. I showed screenshots on a uh, um, Facebook and also on uh, Atari Age, and it's still not in the we're going to finish it realm. And the only reason is because um, you know the playfield resolution may be something that we can't overcome um, as far as making the game kicks like. So I think it is, but I'm not a exactly. huge kicks you know fanatic. So um, I think it would be a pretty cool kicks game, but it may turn off some experts that want higher resolution. So, which is just, I wouldn't say not possible. It'd just be. Yeah. There's just so, not enough. Like you have to, if yeah, you have so to draw it, with the play field. Yeah. So you get the vertical resolution. So the resolution of the game on the Atari would be 39, no, 38 horizontal maximum could be 40 yeah. by border. And by a hundred. Yeah. And the reason why it's split is because you have two colors that you have to draw. So even though it's two hundred single line resolution to get the two different colors per line, you have to split it up and that gives you an effective, you know, thirty eight by a hundred draw area. So Right. So So as long anyway. as you can make a, a fun, playable game that feels like kicks, then it doesn't really matter if the resolution is a little bit smaller. Exactly, yeah, I've been working with uh, TJ, um, Tom, again. He seems to be working on all my projects, it seems. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've been trying to, well, he's been trying, I should say, try to get like a 98 pixel sprite to see if that would uh, be something that uh be worthwhile. It's flickers a little bit, of it. actually, it flickers too much to be. Oh. Someone calling me? Oh, here we go. Are okay. you calling me? Am I calling? No. Everything's good. We're all okay. good. <laughs> Everything's fine. Oh, you have slowed down. Let's have an incoming call. Are you getting a call? Yeah, but I would be calling me. I don't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're now now we're showing John's uh, John's kicks. He says. I would like to show kicks so we can get, well, this is him talking to me, so we can get some feedback from people whether they think the play, fi play field resolution um, is good enough. Um, and I played hey, just like... Uh, Tanya, if you draw while holding the button down, then you can actually draw orange, which is... Uh, oh, she can't hear me. Um, yeah. So if you draw with the button down, you can draw orange. Did I put oh, reset okay. in this? Can you, can you reset in this? I don't know if you can. I don't know if I... No, 
No, you can't. That's okay. Very lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but yeah, if, oh, you, that's fine. if you hold the button and you draw slow, that's the risk reward because then it draws orange. Oh. Button draws um, slow. You get, you get double points for the orange squares, but obviously you can get. Ah. So, in the arcade, you actually yeah. have two buttons. So if you actually hold on the button before you start drawing, and then keep it held down, there. And but you, you can't complete right. it now. It's, um, <laughs> in, in the arcade, you could have completed it just by going straight down. Um, but right, you would have got like again. sixty-five, seventy percent of it. Yeah, yeah, you get more it's, points by drawing it away. Yeah, this is yeah, this is just a proof of concept. Just get the mechanics down. So you see the sparks working around. I think the uh, yeah the um, screen up top looks kind of cool. Um, that's um, oh no yeah there. there. So there's play field drawing kicks, logo. Oh so yeah, okay, that's how. And then on the right hand side, you're using the play field again for lives. I guess is that what that yep, is? exactly. It's very similar to what the arcade looks like. So it's uh yeah. So I think it's. I think it's kind of cool. And again, I, I, I think it's yeah. good enough to move forward with. Um, but again, I'll... I think so too. Especially with the, the orange and the blue gives kind of a, a 3D depth effect to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really neat. So I think uh, I plan on working on this a little bit in uh, 2021 in between projects. Once I get something that's playable, um, a lot of it's going to be like just to draw patterns and stuff like that. You know, I'll, I'll post it on Atari Age and get people's feedback and they can say whether it's worth moving on to. Yeah. Well, everybody is saying this is totally fine. I would totally buy this. Oh, perfect. People will buy it just like this. Mm -hmm. No more work needs to be done. <laughs> oh, perfect. Good. <laughs> uh, definitely feasible. Resolution is fantastic. Um, yeah everybody's very positive about this so and i i think so too i think uh you could have enough action and you've got that guy in the center going around i mean yeah, the eventually kicks. you have that line is that what it's called yeah the lore of a lot you. of these games yeah. <laughs> yeah you get the sparks going around yeah nathan and i have been going back and forth about um how we're going to do the kicks you can actually have two kicks at the same time what you want to do at the later levels is they call it split right. the kicks where you uh draw a line and uh, have one of them on each side and you get huge bonus points and, uh, um, it's, it's it's a neat game i think it's kind of cool so uh, i've never been that good at it yeah to be honest with you so i didn't even i i love it. this game and i i'm pretty decent at it i i play like everything else on my c64 so yeah okay, i'm really good. looking forward to it so maybe i'll send you the uh, proof of concept first and you can uh um oh, you know sure give me feedback before i uh, post it to everyone else so oh excellent yes but yeah, so, it's probably uh, something in 2021. So, 2021, lots and not lots next year. Yeah. <laughs> so the next one we're going to look at is uh, Tutankham, and when I was doing research, I noticed that um, they did want to call it Tutankhamun, but there's not enough room on the marquee to do that. So it would just be too cluttered and, or too small, I guess. So they, just, they abbreviated it to Tutankham. So we're going to take a look at the arcade version of this first so you can get a good idea of what it looks like. Because the 2600 version of this inverted its 90 degrees. Um, because, yeah, again, the 2600 is is not good at going left and right. It's much better at going up and down. Um, but the arcade, as you can see here, is a, a maze that doesn't go up and down at all and goes left and right. Right. Um, which reminds me a lot of kind of Wizard of War-ish with the, with the maze and the enemies in the maze. Yep. Interestingly, I had a approved concept for champ programming for this, and I had developed it uh. where... The champ version had levels that scrolled all four ways. Oh wow! It was really cool. Yeah. I'm really bummed I can't find that code. But oh no. Okay, anyway. so we're gonna take a look at if I can get it. There we go. Your version. Your proof yeah. of concept. Yeah, let's yeah say. this is like. Probably one day's worth of work, but you can see so, it has the uh, same brick pattern thing. 
Yeah, using the brick trick. But and this, so um, you, on this one, yeah, this you can is scroll back than, and forth. Uh, than Zookeeper in that. When you scroll, it doesn't look good. Like, it looks, the artifacts are weird. Um, you can turn it off again oh, with yeah. the uh, left difficulty switch. You want to turn off the, uh, so you can see what a solid version would look like, which... Okay. Okay, yeah, that scrolls a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not really sure what to do there. Um, so maybe I could mm -hmm. actually have a, you know, maybe a pattern inside the, in the play field. But would it really it actually scroll look, this fast? And not go with the would lines. It's... Um, yeah. Would it scroll this fast when you're playing, though? Because this is seems excessively fast. Well, no. I mean, because it's, it's more like a dungeon crawler kind of thing. You're rarely ever, like, you know, moving that fast because there's so many things. You're usually in place most of the time, you know, the way those monster generators are. Things compiling out of those and you're, you know, you're blasting away and then you make you move. So, so maybe it would be fine. I'd probably just keep it an option like uh... I did with a zookeeper. It's only like one line of code to turn on or off. So, uh, um, right. I should say that I've, yeah, the code to mix it when you're scrolling takes slow. a while, but to turn it off is easy. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, you've got I, the I map up top, which is awesome. Like the arcade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm not sure if Nathan's a big fan of this because I sent him the, uh, Proof of concept a couple of times and uh, didn't seem he, he didn't send me a big batch of sprites. But then again, we were working on like <laughs> ten games at the time, so um, he's like, yeah, so, "More work? What?" Yeah, so <laughs> I, I drew that guy, so um, and all the other sprites. Which, the other ones I think look pretty cool, but that guy. Looks oh yeah, good. yeah. So the portals look good. The key, key, yeah. uh, the the gate, I guess, looks good. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have you have your map up top, which would uh, yeah. Um, you know, to focus on what part, you know, the top would uh, highlight right. what part of the maze you're on. Um, so you'd see all the little, it's kind of like a um, radar, like uh, um, Wizard of War has. Right, so your guy would be highlighted in the top maze? Yeah, and then you don't see the maze, all the yeah. uh, enemies or keys or something like that. I'm not sure. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Yep, people are responding really nice uh, to it. Uh, I'd play the hell out of this game finished. Uh, RetroAndy69 says, always love this arcade game. Um, love the look of this, McMuse says. Yeah, everybody's very happy. The Brick Trick looks great. Uh, oh, Socrates says, oh man, talk about Nostalgia Trip. I haven't seen the arcade version since the 80s. Yeah. So we're going to move on to Moon Cresta. And um, let's just show the arcade first of this quickly. Because the proof of concept is, is you've got a title screen and the ship. So I kind of want to give a preview for people who are not familiar with Mooncresta, mm -hmm. which I wasn't very very familiar either with it yeah baba di Crescenzo did a great version for the atari 7800 um and uh yeah he already he said i could use his sounds um if i wanted to um for and he gave oh, me all the logic too so um it was my idea first i think but uh, luckily Bob, <laughs> you know, after i abandoned the project for whatever five years he decided to uh to do it for the 700 you did a great job obviously so uh um yeah yeah so I, it's it's kind of like um a, it's a vertical space shooter with a triple ship which reminds me a lot of galaga where you have multiple yep. weapons and you can power up or you can lose them um so is this a game you played in the arcade quite a bit yeah, this I've is never the, seen this in the arcade. This is one of the earliest games I remember playing as a kid. Like, I don't know when it came out, but whenever it was, I probably played it that year. Like, when we were first being introduced to video games, because I thought yeah. this one's fairly, fairly early. So, anyway, I was sorry, it was kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, it make it great. I think. Um, you know, it's kind of it's like a Mega Mania feel to it as well. So, I thought it'd be a good yes. fit for the Atari. So, um, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, so it's I started this at the same time I was doing a Wizard of War and ripoff back in two thousand seven, so I didn't get far in it. Um, but it was maybe something I I do 
or finish at some point. I don't know if I would do it with just assembly though, or, you know, right. But obviously a much better game could be done with the arm. Um, I could use yeah. the, uh, my Galaga engine. And, and work for it. Nathan actually did that. Good job, Nathan. The title screen. Yeah, it's really, really good. <laughs> and room for the champ games title at the bottom. <laughs> yep. Always. And you know, it's got a 2010, uh, uh, a date on it, so it's been around for a little while. Yep. And then we're gonna go take a look at the uh, the ship. So the ship was created as well. Go for it. Yep. And the ship looks really good. So did Nathan do the ship graphics as well? No, I did that. And this... Oh, look at that. Ah, very I nice. Think. So you got the star field. Nice. What's that? And the score. You've got the star field and the score and the ship. It yep, exactly. Amazing. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it started off really cool. Oh yeah. And you said Should the we... star field was ported over to Galaga? Yeah, basically, yeah. I use the same kind of logic. My my cat Junie's getting really upset. We're usually in bed by now and she's sleeping on the side of my feet. <laughs> she just came over and just uh -oh. bit me like three times. Well, the good <laughs> thing is it's it's Gorf time. Cool. So we don't want your cat biting you. <laughs> she says, "Hurry up, play Gorf." So no, this fine. is the exclusive world premiere of Gorf um, from Champ yes. Games, John Champo. Um, so are you ready, everyone? Let's do it. Press that button. I have not seen this. I've held back. This is like 70% done, so anyone, I, I know I usually have a history of really um, debuting things at 95%, but this one, this is five games <laughs> in one. This is uh, this is quite the challenge. It's a lot. Um, and yes. Thanks, Nathan. It's like a multi-game. So, Gorf Arcade. Novice, Standard, Advanced. And Champ Games at the bottom. So... Let's go for your, novice, just so you can show more. Do you have the I Atari see. box playing? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. it's playing. Okay. So, there's five levels, like you said. This one is uh, Astro Battles. It's called a clone of Space Invaders. It's the it is the only mission that takes place on Earth instead of space. Twenty four enemies attack in the classic pattern set by the original game. So you've got the UFO going back and forth at the top. You've got your shield which protects you, looks like, when you're not shooting. I have not played this game very much. I think I've played it on my C64. Tiny, you can move oh, up. Wait. My left one is run out. Let me plug in hardwired headphones now. <laughs> the game's laughing at us. We're laughing at Tanya. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Ah. I love to hear, I love to hear the Atari box. Hunt. Oh, is this long enough? Just so we know, there's only like probably 20% of the sounds have been done. Um, but um, Lee Kebler, Keebs on Atari H, had agreed to do the sound. So, uh, um, nice. Starting with after, so to help with the sounds. Ross Keenum started them, and then uh, Lee's going to finish them. Okay, There's actually a so, couple thousand here that I took from Wizard of War just for placeholders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you know how many uh, speech patterns there are in uh, Gorf? Um, there's at least 30. Nathan did all the sound, all the speech patterns. Um, so thanks again to Nathan. I don't know if does graphics. He also does <laughs> Atari's box voices too. So he did a great job. <laughs> awesome. Um, so it's... Uh, Retro Jason said, asks a question. What's the difference between this and the original 2600 version? Oh my god, the screen clear is awesome. Even though it's a simple effect, that was very cool. Oh, do we still have you? Oh yeah, I'm here. Um, okay. Well... Um... I'm not really sure about. I thought the 2600 version was actually pretty good, the original one. Um, but I'm not yeah. really sure what the differences are. I know they only had six, 18 invaders instead of we're using the same 
trick as just sort of this this screen is comp not done at all. They don't fly down or fire. So this one. Um, oh, okay. So it's one. not much of an opposition for Tanya on this screen. No, this this will be your uh, practice. <laughs> yeah, there's screen. nothing shooting. But this is uh, this one's not done yet. Oh, you're not flying down and killing you. Oh, yeah, it was like this seems simpler than the first round. <laughs> <laughs> it's much easier, yeah. This one I kind of put off because I said, oh, I'm just, it's going to be just like Galaga. I'll just do this one last. And then I ran out of time. Right. Um, but you can imagine this is using the same engine as Galaga, so it's going to be. Right. Yep. Yeah. So very, very nice. I'll have it. I'm planning on having that um, level done before I release a demo. Oh. Which I'm hoping to do before the end of the year, so it's. Oh, I'm sticking. Um, um, work in progress of the. Should we play standard then? <laughs> uh, those those big round things coming out that were shooting at you looked amazing. The the uh, the shading on them. Oh yeah, nice. Uh, Nathan did all the graphics, really of nice. course. He did great on it. So she might want to try novice. Yeah, are you not playing novice? Well, because I thought you it wasn't. That's what I wanted. Oh, play novice. Why? Oh, so you can get to the ship. There's five levels. Yeah, but don't you want to see them shooting? No, 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 they won't shoot. Oh, on any of the levels? No, just on that one level that's not done. The novice, or? Oh, I see. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry. Tanya can't hear you, so. I thought you wanted me to play standard. No, no, no. Novice, so you can so get further. So you could further. see that level. Oh, no, it has nothing to do with it. Okay. Yeah, uh, Esther says, wow, five screens, finally all of it available on your home console. Yep, exactly. It's kind of cool, yeah. I, I didn't realize how, I, I think I bit off too much uh, to chew here. Um, this is one of Nathan's favorite games. Um, I, love, <laughs> uh, I, I love Gorf too, but it's it's been a lot of work because uh, it's basically five games in one. So, yeah, because yeah, they're all completely different games. Like yeah, they exactly. play differently, so, different graphics. Yeah, but like for the, this level, the laser um, laser level, it's almost done. I still need to implement the bombers, actually. Right now, they just come right down at you, but in the arcade game, they actually take off and come towards you like in a pattern. So. Um, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, but it, it, works for, it works for a demo. And this, of course, the only thing that's missing is the logic to have them fly down and fire at you, but it's going to be... You know, very similar to what's being done in Galagon, so. And oh, that yeah. guy that comes across the street, across the screen, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, lots of comments uh, uh, from the chat. Uh, speech sounds good. That looks amazing. Very nice ship explosion. Uh, oh, it says, oh, you can move up and down and left and right, somebody says. Oh, oh you <laughs> can. Ah, there you go. Oh, that's helpful. Yeah, so this is not a fixed rail kind of shooter left and right. You can move around. Oh, that's yes. Cool. Although I d I'm not sure if how useful that is. Don't get hit. They want to see the fifth level. Ah! Don't get hit. <laughs> this should be a little bit easier than the last time. I ah. move a little bit slower. Ah, concentric circles okay. are too big. Maybe not. I, I assume I have to shoot them. <laughs> oh, come on. Careful. Oh, you have ah. to move down. Terrible. At least you, can always use the, uh, you can always use the, the cheat. Have, oh, have, yeah, there's a cheat? Have Tanya hold down the button and then you hit select. And you can skip right to it. Oh. Hmm? Okay, we'll do that if she doesn't make it to level 5 yeah, this time. She can, earn it. she can move up in this one, too. Oh, That's you can right. move up in this first level, too. All the, way to oh. the, all, the way to the... all the way to the shield? Yeah. Ah, nice. I mean, it's a lot more dangerous. Yeah. That's for sure. Now, my other cat, Felix, is up now, too. <laughs> Uh-oh. They're teaming up on you. What, the cats? Yeah, the cats are uh, biting him. Because they say it's bedtime for him. <laughs> Felix is a 13-pound killer Maine Coon cat, too. So I really got to listen. Oh, we've got to see that cat. 13-pound Maine Coon. Can you, oh, Maine Coon. Are you able to show Felix um, on stream? We'll see if he comes down here. He's not as social as Junie. Okay. Um, uh, Prow7 se ask, asks a question. So this is even more work than Zookeeper, which is three different levels. Um, no. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I Zookeeper would say is pretty Zoo intense. Yeah, Zookeeper because uh, yeah, Zookeeper is very very uh, challenging, and because the level those three levels are like almost like three different games in my opinion. At least these all have you're using the same ship and um, the same mechanics. Like Zookeeper, right. um, and it, it just I don't know. Zookeeper just seemed to be maybe it's because it took me two years that I'm gonna say it. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, no, this this one's this one's proven. I did not think I'd run out of time and not have a chance to get the Galaxy himself. Oh. Just doing, I'm like, oh, Astro Battles, how tough can that be? But, you know, just having yeah. like, the animation with them dealing out the uh, invaders and. Um, Are you gonna jump forward? Like, yeah. Okay. You can actually shoot that Gorf guy for 300 points. You can get him. <laughs> We're gonna skip forward. Yeah. Okay. You can do this level. Got three lives. So you say. <laughs> uh, yeah, retro rant. Go ahead. This is by far the most challenging uh, level. Yes, I was practicing on the uh, 2600 version, which is which is fine. It's just missing a level, and this was the one that I had the most trouble with for sure. Yeah. Nathan because said there's going to be so a, a lot of rage resets with this level. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it already, that's for sure. I'll, I'll wear my shirt uh, when uh, when we do the full the full play, when it's at 95%. Ah! Terrible. You made it! Did I? Yeah. How that happen? Nickerin's Felix. Oh, Felix is coming. 12-pound main Coon. So you have to shoot the ship in its tiny little hole in the middle of it. Oh, look, the cat for a second. Oh, oh, oh meow. Oh, what a fluffy cat. Are you being good? Oh, feeling? I can hear him. <laughs> oh, what a cute cat. He says, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. What a fluffington, the D-Train says. Shoot that the is... brain. Uh... Lost the nearby. Oh no. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. And so Zero Patronber and John both have two cats, Arena Foot says. Yep. It's John's life managed by cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ours is too. Can you jump forward to the last one? Yeah. yeah. Hold down the button. Okay, stop. Stop. Okay, now. Oh, I can't do it too fast. Okay. There we go. Oh, the, the game is like losing. talking our ear off. <laughs> the game's losing it because we're jumping levels and it says something every time we uh, press the game select. That's hilarious. Oh, it says, can you shoot the pieces falling off? Oh, I yes. love the, the... Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah, you I love the color transitions. You can, if you can. Oh, 150 points. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of points. Actually, the, when the pieces fall off and they track past the uh, the round bullets from the ship, they transition colors the same as the bullets, and it looks awesome. That's cool. It, it like, ch changes it like rainbow effect. There you go. Oh, we go. Oh, and it says 150. I love when games do that. They, they, where it changes into the points. Where it shows you the score. Yeah. Uh, Retro Randy says, Dang, this is great. The CBS version was one of the first cartridges I, cartridges I bought for the VCS at our local Payless Drugs. This was... I was When I was playing the 2600 version the other day, this was not the hardest level to survive, but I found it was the hardest level to shoot that exact spot. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Show says it. All right. Nice. You did it. All right. And then it repeats. Yep. Excellent. Yeah, you get everything speeds up. You get more enemies. Right. The uh, invaders start a little bit lower. You know, right. Fire faster. All the all the normal stuff. 
Yep. To make so we're looking at t releasing teacher quarters in um the summer. Um, Nathan is um going to do the artwork. I think. Well, definitely. Nice. I do. <laughs> so, um. So yeah. So this is uh, this will be the one after uh after Robot Wars. But... Okay. So the schedule is uh, Robot Wars and Gorf at the yep. moment. Yeah. Then uh. A surprise release, probably in there somewhere. Excellent. Ooh, yeah. Lots of stuff then. Lots of stuff yeah. for Champ Games fans. Absolutely. Out okay. Well, I think we've uh, covered a lot of stuff. Um, there's obviously a ton more to talk about, but uh, we don't want to keep people up too late. And the cats are calling for you to go to bed. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, it looks like I, Nathan wanted you to show um, the uh, title screen stuff because it shows. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. When you go back, so let's go back to the title screen. Okay. And there's things when you press up and down, like on uh, most. Nice. Of the Champ Games credits, coding and design, John W. Shampo. Uh, graphics and voice, Nathan Strom. Music and sounds, Ross Kino. Nice. Is there another screen? Okay. And then it bounces in. Oh, the evil Gorfian robot Empire is attacked. Oh, your assignment is to repel the invasion and to launch a counterattack. You'll engage various hostile spacecraft as you and your journey to try to make to Okay. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Might need to be slowed down a little bit. <laughs> high scores. All you again. Yes. Good job, John. You got all the high scores. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there's no high score support in this. I didn't have time to add it in, but obviously that's high oh. score screens there. So I'm going to stay at the high score nice. because you can't even enter your name. <laughs> exactly. well, I'll make sure that's in so there. beat those scores. In the demos. Oh, excellent. Yeah, those yeah, are all okay. the bells and whistles. Yeah, if anyone's interested, I'm hoping to, like I said, I'm hoping to get a demo out before the end of the year or so, before people start asking. So. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you so much mm -hmm. thank for you. showing this off all your fun. amazing games and showing off your latest masterpiece, Gorf Arcade. Now that people Thanks. can play the the fifth level finally at home, and they don't have yeah. to go to the arcade and put put in the quarters in the machines yeah, or use exactly. me, I guess. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, no, thank you for the thank you for taking the time. It's this is a, a a lot of time to devote to this, James and Tanya. So I appreciate it, and thanks everyone for being oh, on too. It's so, our pleasure. So, it's always nice to talk talk Atari with with people that love it as much as I do. So, thank you. Oh, you bet. And thank you to everybody uh, watching and listening and watching on YouTube later, checking out all these amazing games. So we'll let you go. So thank you so much, John. Excellent. And okay. we'll see you Thanks, next guys. time. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. There we go. Oh, headphones are off. <laughs> <laughs> Those earbuds almost made it through. Not really, though. No. Not really. <laughs> Towards I I the end. Need to buy some better ones. Towards the end, I, I, yeah, unfortunately couldn't hear anything he was saying. So oh, I know. That's all right. So we need to get better ones so that uh, they last longer. Mm. Now that I've proved that they work for this type of broadcast. Yeah, it probably needs some better ones. I'm assuming those were the cheapest uh, deal on Amazon at the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not the greatest. Well, they did fix a b feedback problem. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I got them. Because yes. before... His audio yeah. would have come through the speakers and then go yeah. in the microphone. And there would have been a delay yeah. and there was craziness. Yeah. And so hopefully that looked good and sounded good, except for when he cut out. Yeah. I'm excited to see it played back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's in the Gorf background. Gorf is still talking. Insert I'll let it card. talk. Insert coin. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. No, great. So much fun. This is the first time I've looked at the chats this this whole time. So I know um, it's been because it's steady. going and I'm just playing. So yeah. Oh, it looked and sounded good. Awesome. Good. Good. Oh. Hi everyone. <laughs> Hi everyone. Yeah, you can talk now. I know. <laughs> Socrates zero six zero three. Happy to finally catch a stream live. Well, yeah. you caught a good one. Good that's stuff. for sure. Yeah. Um, so we're nearing the end of the year for zero page and for the year. Yeah. Um, so there is. Um, at least one more show before mm -hmm. the end of the year, mm -hmm. which is our Christmas show, which is next Friday, and it will be during the day. Yeah. So Thomas Yench can watch. Excellent. Which is good. Um, and there might be even one more, but it might go to next year, actually. 
Yeah. Um, I don't think you guys, you can hear it through the microphone. I think so. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, oh, well, thank you, John. You're so, you're, Happy holidays. you're so welcome. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays to you. Um, so we're going to do a Christmas show next Friday. It's yes. going to be at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern noon? time. Yeah. Okay. Because it'll be after breakfast, but before after the dinner. After Christmas, presents are open. Presents are open. Before we can say then. what we got. We okay. can bring it on the stream. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's, a, and, oh. I am also I got there. the concerto cards. <gasps> Woo! That's exciting. This is really exciting. Um, Big showcase of Hanukkah games. That's right. There is at least one Hanukkah game, I believe. Yeah. Are there? Or did we play that last year? A few menorahs in there somewhere. Maybe, but we can play it again. The concerto card, which enables me to play all the seventy-eight hundred games, which I'm so excited for. Mm. All the on actual hardware, and uh, so I'll be modding my seventy-eight hundred this weekend. We'll see how long it takes. I don't have the pokey chip that goes in here yet mm. um it's said it was to... supposed to come any day now um so it can get the extra sounds which is not necessary right away because i can mod my 7800 independently um that's coming very soon look i got all these things down and i didn't show them off anyway oh I have a big well, stack okay. of big stack of uh you were chatty champ, chatty champ so wear, that's okay champ games yep um yeah so i've got a big list of 7800 games mm that we're going to play um and a exclusive debut of a 7800 game chase by lila pujinkin powen oh my yeah, goodness i think that sounds right <laughs> <laughs> no um it's awesome it's really really fun um it's like pac-man without power up pellets oh cool okay and tons of different mazes like nice every mace. level is a different maze it's so awesome mm -hmm. where do you get those box cases oh um, there's a place that sells these cases for all different sizes mm. of like, you can get them for Vectrex 2600, um, even for, uh, just the Atari cartridges too. Uh, just look for plastic cases. Like, I can't did you just buy them off Amazon or they have a, a store on eBay and they have a, a website as well. I really cannot gotcha. remember. Yeah. They're really good cases. They're they're pretty thick. They're pretty thick. I'm surprised by how Retro thick they are. Retro Protection. Yeah. Socrates 0603. Thank you. I knew I'd remember it if yeah. you said it. Yeah. That is the one. Mm -hmm. They're not cheap, but they're not expensive. They're kind of in the middle ground, but I like to keep my boxes uncrunched. Yeah. So they are definitely... Yeah. good for that like, and you know cats like to knock things off yes. off shelves so you know it's good to have some extra protection from them so all my boxes are in these yes including my vectrex as yeah. well because vectrexes are different sizes yeah yeah it's nice it's nice that you can get them so. yeah. yeah and you can get ones for the cartridges for your really expensive rare ones that you don't want wrecked yeah as well yeah. Makes sense. uh don't buy from the ebay store buy direct it'll save you a little yes mm. exactly uh let me just see what else is coming up because there is a ton of stuff in the new year including mm. the award show mm. it is the 18th of december the cutoff is the end of the year that's when we go we shut the door mm. on 2020 releases and that is the year's release and then you'll have your your list of the top ones and well we'll have the list of all of them okay and then we send that list to the uh nomination committee yep and they will pick out their favorites Gorf. <laughs> <laughs> they'll pick out their favorites yes and then that will be voted on um the middle of january mm. and then we will have the show february 6th i believe it is mm. the atari awards that should be a saturday and uh that's going to be a very big show as well it might just be tanya and me presenting them we'll just have to see what's happening at that point in time yeah february's February is a, is a ways away. away, and it might be totally fine to have a couple of people people maybe. standing on our balcony uh, giving away awards. No. <laughs> 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 um, I, yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to say what's hap going to happen in yeah. February. So yeah. Um, so we're gonna have the concerto cart special. NPH will do the opening number. NPH, yeah, <laughs> You're dancing and singing. Woo! Just have to raise some money to get him here. <laughs> Erlen and Darcy are doing well. They're far away yes. from us. Yeah. We're all protected in our own 
yeah. houses. You speak to Erlen uh, yep. fairly frequently. Yep. And Darcy yep. online. And Darcy, well, he's in town right now, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah Dealing with go, his, his business. So. Go for another walk with them. Yep. At a safe distance. At a safe distance, yeah. Um, yeah, so as soon as everything's good, they're, they'll, they'll, Darcy will come back in the show, and hopefully yeah. Erlen, Erlen, if, he, if things calm down get, with his projects. Yeah, he's working hard, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've already got some games lined up for some shows in January. So Excellent. I'm sure by then there'll be a lot more they'll, There will games. be, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's at least one more in this year, um, which takes us pretty much the end of the year anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. Make sure they're acid-free free plastic. Someone in Sweden sold manual protectors that had some oil on them. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, that's not good. Um, yeah, you might want to look into, like, comic book protectors for manuals because they are yeah, very safe. That would make sense, yeah. yeah. And you can even use the comic book backings, too. But I'm sure there's lots out there for manuals. New Year's show after that? Eh, no, we'd be taking a week off. <laughs> We're not going to do a New Year's show. Yeah, probably no. not. We'll yeah. Some, we will some do time a Christmas off, show. A little though. time off. And I'll be preparing for the awards. Mm. That takes a lot of work, so... Mm. I'll be coordinating with uh, um, uh, um, Arena Foot. Arena Foot. There you go. It was in there. <laughs> yep. Arena yeah. Foot and uh, getting the award show underway. Yeah. So that's enough for tonight. <laughs> James only, has done all the talking. Hours. You've been blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I've done all the playing. It's lovely. Yep. Arena Foot, me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and we'll get that uh, all organized. So thanks everybody for watching. Dan ABC, Everyone Arena for joining. Foot, Miss Command. It was a great show. Yeah. 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 S Ramirez two thousand eight. Metalunar. D Train thirty seven. Lilla Pajinkin Powen. Can I call you? You gotta give me a name. <laughs> no, that I can you say. need to. You need to get it. You need to get it right. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. Keep um, practicing. Uh, it's like pawn. 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 Lilla Pajinkin Pawn. 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 He did send me like if you put it. You need into, to. You need to practice. <laughs> I think it's Swedish, and if you put it into a Swedish, Swedish. pronunciation, yeah. like says it out loud, it says it properly. Yeah, I'll have to do that again before I show his game off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Captain fast. Classic, Flackix, Dennis Debro, mm. uh, Socrates zero six zero three RC seven E, Nathan Strum, Johnny WC twenty three, whoever course. whoever he is. Yeah, that guy. Uh, Metal Lunar seven, Prow seven, Retro Andy sixty nine. Mm -hmm. uh, Long Spice live Wear. Gorf, Spiceware. Gray Defender. Oh, hey, Gray Defender. Kaboomer Gray. AA. Nostalgic 26 says Kitty. Uh, <laughs> Dan AVC. Oh. Gerandy. That's funny. Uh, uh, retro, retro Jason. Jason. Lots a bunch of retros. retros in there. Ice Posta. Hey, Ice Posta. Mick Muse. Yeah. Oh, everyone was joining oh, in. Everyone popped up. All the names. Up. I just posted at the top there, too. Yeah. Nice. So lots of names. Excellent. Spiceware has cats. It's allergic. <laughs> oh, oh, no. No cats for Spiceware. No. Oh, that sucks. That's, that's okay. You can, you can, you can say like hard Harrison. R's yep. when they show up. So. That's right. Yeah. And hi to Arena Foot's dog. Lila is fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He'll uh, get it right. I'll keep, next I'll developer keep show it. should be Spiceware. We did Spiceware. Yeah. Huh? We did, um, so yeah, that's actually a good point. Um, we have done three developer spotlights. Mm -hmm. um, John Champo, Daryl Spice Jr. was the one before this, mm -hmm. and Thomas Yench was the one before that. Gotcha. Who's next? Mm -hmm. Who should we do next? Yeah. Can't get enough of Spice. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, we did a pretty thorough one with the other guys. They let us go on for a long oh, time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. John's like, mm, no, he's in I got my limits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's pretty far. <laughs> um, yeah. So, if anybody has suggestions for who we should do a spotlight on next, mm. be a couple months from now. Mm. They're pretty intense um, yeah. preparation to do. Yeah, yeah. And it's good to do it in conjunction with a release, too. Yeah. It's a nice way to do exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Dan Kitchen. Yeah. Well, we would we'll talk with Dan when he releases you, his. Yeah, you um, did do an interview with him at at the um, Portland. Portland. Yes. Yep. On two thousand eighteen. Yes. I think that was. And so when he did when he releases Gold Rush, we'll definitely talk with him. Yes. So that we'll kind of do uh, developer spotlight on. Yeah, that makes kind sense. Kind of like that, yeah. but he's 
like he'll have just one homebrew so mm -hmm. not much of a spotlight chris walton mm -hmm. we, you said that the other day or i said that i think so yeah uh, Omega Matrix would be a very good one as well. Mm -hmm. Dennis Debro would be an excellent one. Mm -hmm. How many years have you been doing this show now? It'll be three years in a couple months. Yeah. 2018 was when. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So 19, 20, 2021. Yeah. So three years in a couple months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, DPC. DPC. <laughs> uh, Spice, Spiceware and Dan Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Um. So those are great ones, and those would definitely be in the running. Dennis Dubrow, Chris Walton, and Omega Matrix. Yes. Um, those would be excellent, excellent people, because they've yeah. done a lot for a long time. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. Spotlight on Albert. I did interview Albert. You did, at, in Portland. Yeah. Eight, was it 2018, 19 or 18? I think 18. 18. Yeah, 18. So you can look at that. That's... A pretty good one. It's I mean, a pretty it's, extensive interview. He talked for quite a while. I remember because I was yeah. holding the camera. So, uh, yeah, there, yeah, you had a good interview that with him. That was a good it was one. Really it's good. pretty thorough. Yeah. I mean, we could go way more in depth with it. So maybe yeah. down the line. Metal Lunar, I like that. I like that icon. Oh, kitty. With it's an Atari with a Santa hat. Yeah, I can't do that. Good I have jobs. no idea how you do that. Yeah, I'm sure there's a way to figure that out. There you go. There. Kitties. <laughs> Um, so I think that's it for tonight. Mm -hmm. We're gonna let what? Gorf <laughs> Gorf Gorfian, Gorfian Empire. I'm Gorfian sure. Empire. <laughs> Scum Software. I've been catching up the past episodes and just watched that one. What a great inter was a great interview. Yeah. It yeah. was very thorough. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was really fun talking with him and learning more about Atari Age. Mm -hmm. Colonel Lama. Hello and hello, Scum Software. Um, so thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next Friday mm -hmm. at noon, an early show. It's on Christmas Day. So if you've opened up your presents, you have nothing to do and you want to get away from the family, you say, I've got to take a video conference. Yeah. And pretend yes. and whenever they walk Lock in the room. Lock yourself in the room. Yeah. You just talk to the computer. Talk to the computer. Yeah. And, and you just say, oh, yeah, I agree. We, I'm not on Twitch. I don't should, know what you're talking about. We should about. definitely go ahead with that and move forward with those plans. <laughs> And yeah, so yeah. that's a good way of getting away from the family for a second. That's right. Important Im Zoom call. I have an important Zoom call <laughs> on in 10 Christmas minutes. Day. <laughs> Work cannot wait. Gotta yeah. take this. <laughs> exactly, D Train. Yeah. So everybody, set yeah. your watch. Um, so we will talk with you again soon in a week. And uh, hope you have great holidays mm -hmm. and have a good weekend. Yes. And hopefully you're not in the snow zone in the east. Yeah terrible it's crazy yeah are yeah. they having terrible snow out there yeah like two feet in really uh, some places aren't you happy we're not uh, out east this year visiting my parents oh my god yes <laughs> thank you yeah <laughs> one bright spot of covid oh. <laughs> <laughs> no it's just the snow the weather out there is just so cold oh i Re love the snow but i had I never heard of He's... the the words um frozen rain what is it? Frozen? Oh, uh, freezing rain. Freezing rain before, because I've lived in BC yeah. all my life. Yeah. Freezing rain. <laughs> it's not just rain, it's freezing rain. It rains, and then it freezes, so everything's in a sheet of ice. And it's so cold coming down. Oh my god. It's freezing, and the most intensely dangerous weather I think you can possibly have. I have to say, freezing <laughs> yes. rain, like you want to... It's on your windshield, like a thick... Coat thick of ice, ice, thick ice on pathways. You can't walk without breaking bones. Forty it's inches in insane. Yeah. Bingmaton. Yeah. <laughs> Bingmaton. Where what? Bingmaton. I I like snow. Thund thunder snow. What the hell's thunder snow? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Freezing rain. Common in the Met Midwest. I grew up in Ottawa, thunder which is snow. eastern Ontario. Yeah. And kind of Midwesty, like you get some similar, similar. You get a lot of thunder and lightning in the summer, and you get you get freezing rain in the winter. Freezing rain is the worst, though. I think of all the weather types, freezing rain is Ugh. pretty awful. Terrible. Um, really dangerous. You can't. It's almost like you can't leave the house. My dad broke both arms. Yes. Walking out the back steps of her house one year. Then finished a report and then went to the hospital. Well, that's another thing entirely. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Crazy. Uh, Mad Max weather, thunder snow. Yeah, thunder snow. Welcome to thunder yeah. snow. Yeah. Make us left, left coast people look weak. I'm going to say you left the left coast people are kind of weak. 
<laughs> but for compared, weather. Yeah. Compared to like the middle of the country and uh, all those people who deal with hurricanes all year round. So yeah. um, the hurricanes are pretty bad down down south too. But yeah, we don't get, the only thing hurricanes. we get here is earthquakes Yeah, and almost never. So. Well, you say that now. Don't to don't <laughs> say that. We never have an earthquake. After 2020, you don't want to say stuff like that. Yeah. Like 2021 will probably yeah. be the year of the earthquake. Thunder Has had thunder snow. snow already this year. <laughs> thunder snow. <laughs> yeah, we know the hurricanes are coming. And can leave. That's a good point. So uh, I missed all these follows. 2020 finale. Yes. And so did you guys. Shh, people, shh, don't make. I'm gonna put all the follows on the screen here. Okay, got a lot of follows. Yeah. Oh. So, Nostalgia twenty six retro Randy sixty nine followed. Nice. Um, uh, great offender said cheer no sound. Well, we don't need to put that on again. <laughs> uh, Ricardo Pym resubscribed for seven months. Uh, Zmert followed. Thank you. Flackets, where do you have earthquakes almost every day? Ground Trooper resubscribed for twenty six months. Wow. How do you do that? <laughs> well, he has been subscribed. Oh, for 76 months. You could. You could pay a whole uh, bunch. Uh, Almanger64 followed. S. Ramirez, 2008, <laughs> resubscribed. Nine months in a row, 19 total. RC70 resubscribed. Colonel Lama uh, has followed. Mm. Mr. Murph, 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 Murph Ben Gaming followed. Scum Software followed. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much to all those people who are following and subscribing. So, Because we, I didn't add those overlays on the screen for that other part, which I should. But I, I was doing so much. I just didn't add those in. But I'll have those next time. Hmm. Two-year anniversary for me. Anyway, yeah, okay, yeah. we got to go. It's, it's all sunny warm. Of course we are weak. All the industrious people live in places without beaches. What did Hawaii ever invent? <laughs> That's uh, true. The West Coast is known for um, the film industry. <laughs> that's about that's well, true. And, tech. and logging. Lo yeah, that's true. Tech. You gotta you gotta give it to the tech. So, yep. but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> where yeah, Flack, it's where are you that you have earthquakes almost every day? That's got to be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have earthquakes every day too. You just can't feel. Them. Well, yeah. They're like, mm, I felt more earthquakes where I lived in Ontario than I ever have here. And people always talk about earthquakes here oh. because of the fault lines because under the one ocean. Could happen. One could happen. But where mm. where I grew up in Ottawa, Chile. there's there are fault Chile. Chile, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, there are fault lines in Quebec and they right. very quite periodically have earthquakes and we feel them there. So I felt quite a few earthquakes in grunge Ontario. Grunge and coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah add, grunge and coffee. Add those to the list, yeah. <laughs> Starbucks, yeah. <laughs> Starbucks, yeah. Starbucks, yeah. Anyway. Okay. Um, thanks again for hanging out. There's all the follows catching up. Mm -hmm. um, so, like I said, next Friday, see you here, noon, early yes. show. Yes. With us again. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and to the rest who can't make it, happy holidays, yep. happy Hanukkah. Enjoy your time with your family, even though we're all in isolation. Yep. Um, we can all Zoom create. Them. We can all play and create video games, so we're all happy, right? That's right. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, good night. Good night. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs>